In 23 regular season events in the history of Live Golf, only 13 men have lifted a trophy as champion. Today at the magnificent Hong Kong Golf Club, Abraham Anser intends to become winner number 14. The Texas native and Mexico Olympian has displayed admirable quality and temperament through 36 holes and brings a five-stroke lead into the final round. But any wobble and the likes of Harold Varner, Cam Smith or John Rahm could pounce. It's Championship Sunday in Hong Kong and the team title race could be a thriller. Stinger GC have been competitive from the word go and it's been plain sailing so far in Saudi Arabia. They were playing great golf. We were like, oh wow, we're actually catching up and we just kept playing good. And it's in. The crushers have come from absolutely nowhere. This is quite stunning. I mean, we could have given up. This is something of a collapse by Louis Oosthuizen Stingers. One of the all-time great team performances on Championship Sunday. We have something in the crushes that you can't measure. Who will reign supreme on Championship Sunday? A little bit of bad blood off the last week, I think. They're pushing for a victory, but uh, we'll have something to say about that. The Fireballs, top of the pylon, easily the best in class. The team is doing great, which is uh, nice to see, but still one round to go. Ripper GC are the big movers. A few things go away and we'll be up there. I think this is going to be the event, hopefully, where it, where it turns around for us. Abraham answer. Yeah. When the bright lights are on, the big test is going to come tomorrow. We're going to get it done, man. We're going to get it done. It should be a wild ride here in Hong Kong. Abraham Anser has produced a masterclass so far in Hong Kong. He is bogey-free through his opening two rounds, and 15 birdies have him five shots clear. It's also helped Sergio Garcia's fireballs to first place, seeking their first team win of the year. But winning a Live Golf League title against this field is rarely straightforward. Harold Varner III and Eugenio Chakara have tasted Live Golf glory, while Cam Smith and John Rahm trail by six. Our shotgun start is imminent. Wherever you're watching across the world, welcome inside the broadcast studio here at the Hong Kong Golf Club. Myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foles, David Ferretti, you know us by now. We can't wait to get started. 51 players will tee off imminently. It's a staggered shotgun start, of course, on Championship Sunday. The top uh, nine teams in the team competition separated by nine shots. So that could be a thriller, as it was in Jeddah last week. But this is a huge day for Abraham Anser. Five shots yeah. clear, looking for his first title. A 63 on the first day, a 62 yesterday. Absolutely magnificent. He's been flawless. What does he need to do, David, to see this through? Every golfer has a wee switch in their head, you know, and he has to, he's turned it off uh, for the last two days and, and he's allowed his body to do, you know, what he's taught it to do over all these years. Jerry, you know, he just, and, and he spoke earlier in the week about not thinking too much. You know, that's what he's got to do. Just go out there, you know, play the same way that you have and don't think about it. He says he's not going to watch leaderboards. He is. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's played mind games all week. He's mm. uh, he's tried convincing himself that this course doesn't suit him, even though the, he knows that it does. That he doesn't have to be perfect, because players often feel like they do have to be perfect to contend with the guys who have more physical power than he has. Uh, the fact is, he's gotten it done through two days if he's able to keep his mind focused and the task at hand and not think about the pot of gold, which, as David knows, is nearly impossible. Uh, then he's got a great chance. Mm. So much depends on the sp on the start he gets yeah. off to. He's almost employing mental diversion tactics isn't he to take himself almost out of the moment and the enormity of it there he is practicing away uh, shotgun start 10 seconds away John Rahm there top right as well the impulse of the 2010 Hong Kong Open champion as well so let's get 
the fourth championship Sunday of 2024 underway at the magnificent Hong Kong Golf Club. It's chilly again. It is slightly murky out there. But here is John Rahm. Says he wants to give Abraham Anser at least a scare today. Make him earn it. He's six back. He tees off at one. He could have been a lot closer were it not for that triple bogey seven at 18 on Friday. But you cannot rule out the Masters champion. Next on the team, welcome the captain of Majestics GC, Henrik Stenson. The Majestics are only two shots off a first podium finish since midway through 2022. And Henrik Stenson has had a terrific tournament as well. He and Ian Poulter have gone low on both days, 66 and 65 for Henrik. Saw that graphic, able to keep it at the fairway almost the entire day. I say 11 and 14 fairways. These are really small fairways. They're firming up and it's, uh, it's not easy to do, but he, when he gets on, I say it a lot, laser-like accuracy as evidenced right there. And now on the team, please welcome the captain of Ripper We'll take you to the T at two. Matt Jones, who was tied for the lead for a good portion of yesterday's round. He doesn't waste any time, does he? No, Matt will get on with it, that's for sure. And there's a beauty to start off with. Ripper GC, only three back of Sergio Garcia's fireballs. The Aussie captain is Cam Smith, and he tees off nine under par. He's also six back, but he's been known to go very low on Championship Sunday. A 61 in Tulsa last year got him into a playoff with Dustin Johnson and Louis Oosthuizen. <laughs> that perhaps not the start he was looking for. Championship Sunday is underway in Hong Kong. The crowds have flocked. The players are enjoying themselves. And our leaders, including Abe Anser, will tee off shortly. So we wonder if he could be the Fireballs day today. They were the low scorers yesterday, 16 under par as a collective to get that three-stroke lead, but it's pretty concertina. And as we saw last week in Jeddah, a quite remarkable performance by Bryson DeChambeau's crushers, who are, as you can see, in fourth place, only seven back. They had a deficit last week of 11 against the Stingers going into the final day, and they won by four. Well, the lion's share of the gallery that's watching the leaders and watching the penultimate grouping, if you will, in our modified shotgun start, the three legendary major champions right there. They are Pat trying to get up that first card path right out of the hole. But uh, those guys, those guys are going to do what they do. They've okay, all okay, been okay. in this position so many times, as has Abraham Answer in his career. You wouldn't. You know, he hasn't made a lot of headlines of late in live golf, but at every stage where he has advanced to in his career, he's been kind of a slow starter. Uh, and that includes the Corn Ferry Tour, the PGA Tour. But he's been a strong finisher and a consistently improving player, as has been the case here in live. And he hit all 18 greens yesterday. He can afford to do that. They just aim for the center of every green here. They're small, Jerry, but these guys that are chasing him, they've got to take these flag six on. And some of them can be quite dangerous. Over to the 12th. Brendan Steele in a group with Dustin Johnson and Thomas Peters. Brendan is one under par for the competition. The high fly is down in 12th place, so they need something quite spectacular here on Championship Sunday. Could be an, an early birdie for the Fireballs. 
Carlos Ortiz is eight under par for the competition, and this is a birdie opportunity at two to get the five balls on the board and stretch their advantage straight away. That slides fast. Doesn't have any effect because, of course, he transferred to Torquay during the <laughs> off-season. So <laughs> trade, yes. what on earth am I talking about? <laughs> um, interesting start. The atmosphere out there looks absolutely fantastic because, you know, this part of the world doesn't see or never sees fields this strong. And they've responded this week, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And Abraham Anser under such pressure. Um, I was saying to Arlo earlier, Jerry, that... that Sleeping on a big lead like that, um, I led by eight w one year going into Munich, and it was the worst night's sleep I ever had. You know, because if you lose, you're an idiot. You know, if you're leading by one or two or something like that, you know, anything can happen. But you get that big lead. There's always the, you know, the should I go for it? Should I? Should I not? It's, uh, it's, it's just awkward. Did you win? I, I, I did, but not after soiling myself a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah. get you caught up with a couple of Abe Anser highlights from yesterday. Uh, he's had a couple of really good birdie streaks in his opening two rounds. This was for birdie at five. This was absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Yeah, that's just imagination and creativity and incredible touch as well. He had a run of uh, five straight birdies on Friday. And then a run of four between 11 and 14 yesterday. That was birdie at 11. He birdied five of his last eight. He is uh, bogey-free so far this week. Let's head out onto the course and speak to our on-course analyst, Suan Heng. First of all, we saw you on the putting green a little earlier on with Cam Smith. Um, what are you looking forward to today? Well, the chasing pack of Cam Smith, Henrik Stenson, John Rahm, they're all going to have to get off to an aggressive start. The front nine is playing tougher this week, so there are some risks that needs to be involved. I spoke to Adam Hayes on the putting green earlier, and he he thinks that John will get off to an aggressive start. He's played really well on the front nine all week this week. And I think if he can do that, he's going to put some pressure on Abe Anser. Abe Anser has had five wins in his career. And in four of them, he had the lead heading into the last day. At the Australian Open, he had a five-shot lead. So this is, this is not unfamiliar territory. If he hits all 18 greens like he did last night on yesterday's round, it's game over. But this front nine is tricky. If he's one or two over par or even even par, he can be caught. Matt Jones for birdie at two. This could be an excellent start from Ripper GC to get them to within two of the fireballs. Well, we did see, and you mentioned it before, uh, David, uh, having that eight-shot lead in, in Munich. Taylor Gooch had a ten-stroke lead in Adelaide, yeah. and that yeah. evaporated down to two at one stage. And he hadn't won uh, a Live Golf individual title at that stage, which is the same situation that Abe Anser faces. So, you know, he's been doing a lot of mental gymnastics this week to take him all, almost out of the moment in terms of its significance. But at some point, somebody, you would think, would put some pressure on him. Oh, yeah, I think so. With the quality of player that he has behind him, someone's going to come out. At him, you know, it just depends on his reaction. Will and, it be this man? Yeah, if it's this guy, that well considered the highest ranked player in the field uh, by his peers, the, high, the best player oh. in the world, arguably. Him and Wako Neiman is a hot hand in the game, but these are sizable footsteps to hear in your hear in your rearview mirror, and that's a beautiful shot. Yeah, and the roars will be clearly audible for a Banser who will have made his way towards the first tee. Bryson DeChambeau's perhaps left himself too much to do. Trails by eight, but who knows, another 58. <laughs> and he could be back in it. He'll be thinking about his team, the Crushers, who took the title seven days ago in Jeddah as well. Richard Bland has had another very, very solid week. He's seven under par. He's already one under today. Teed off at five, this for birdie, and that gets the cleats. An extra shot clear in third place on 23 under par. Remember, all four scores count on Championship Sunday. There is nowhere to hide. Patrick Reed starts with birdie for the four aces on seven. Eugenio Chicada, who has a win in the Live Golf circuit. That was in Bangkok. 
in season one. It was only his fifth tournament as a pro. And he's got himself into contention. And it's going to be an interesting dynamic between Jakarta and Ansa, both teammates, of course, in that final group that are about to tee off. Well, he talked yesterday in his, in his press conference that uh, he had, a, I mean, he said changed his entire life. A chat he had with somebody special, he was cryptic about it, on Tuesday uh, that changed his entire outlook on life and changed everything about the way he's going about things this week. Was it tough love? We don't know. Was it motivation? Something happened on Tuesday that really made him change the way his mind's working this week. Still only 23 years of age. Yeah, and he rode with me uh, back to the hotel in, in one of the courtesy cars, so that might be what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bryson to start with a birdie, and you never know when this man gets going on Championship oh. Sunday. Yeah. Here we go again. Yes. Jakarta to tee it off. He had a five-stroke lead going into the final round in Bangkok and showed admirable calmness after a long rain delay and lightning delay. And he came straight out and played beautifully in the closing holes. That was a bad ricochet off the gallery member there. That bounced deeper into the trees. Harold Varner III, he's also won the Live Golf League title. That was in Washington, D.C. last year. Started terribly. 54th and last in Mayakoba, but says he's got his mojo back now. 64 and 66 so far, 10 under par, five back of Avanson. Left edge, maybe. Yeah, that's going to be good. Fireballs GC, Abraham Anser. Before Abraham Anser tees off a one, let's take you to the green and Cam Smith. This for a, an opening birdie. Oh. So a huge day for Abe Anser. Took a five-stroke lead into the final round of the Aussie Open in 2018 and won by five. He was in the final group in the 2020 Masters with Dustin Johnson. That was played in November at Augusta due to COVID. He didn't fare particularly well that day. How will he fare today? Hmm. Well, as you can see, the team pylon has changed already. This is David Pooch. That was for bogey, so a double for Pooch, who went to the fireballs in that trade with Carlos Ortiz. So it's a tie now between Ripper and the fireballs on 26 under. It can change so quickly. Henrik Stenson, this for a birdie on the first. So a very good start. The first playing one of the hardest holes this week. I said earlier, Adam Hayes as caddy thinks that he's gonna try and get off to a really aggressive start. If he needs to, he is six back. He certainly is capable of doing it. He's made a lot of birdies this week. Spoke in that post round interview about just one bad swing on the first day on the 18th and a bad break. Other than that, he's been playing textbook golf. Got a good read from Henrik's putt. Well, the big guns are firing early here at the Hong Kong Golf Club. And the fans are enjoying it. Ram gets it to 10 under, so too Henrik Stenson. Down to you, Dom. Greg, you've had many big leads in your career. What should Abe's mentality be uh, heading into today's last round? <laughs> Simple, just run through the finishing line. That's all it is, you know. You. You've played well for the get up to this point, and you know you just can't change your strategy or your mindset. If you start playing defensive, you know you can put yourself into trouble. So I always tell myself, run through that finishing line. Well, you've won the Hong Kong Open twice here. What's the secret to this golf course? It's 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 not a boomer's golf course. It's a positional golf course. We all know that. I love the I love these under like the first hole, right? The anti camber. A lot of the fairways got a lot of anti camber. 
So you really got to shape your tee shots to get in the right place. Our league is to bring world-class golf to places that hadn't seen it. It's been a success this week, hasn't it? It really has been. I love it for the guys. A lot of our guys haven't been to Hong Kong before. And I was just speaking to the officials here, and you know, they're so ecstatic about the outcome of the last couple of days. And you know, we've got a good future ahead of us here. We certainly do. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank Enjoy. you, Greg. Thanks, mate. Great to hear from Greg Norman, Commissioner and CEO. And Dom, of course, on home territory. He's been a member here for many, many years. Wako Neiman for birdie at six for Torquay. He won two of our opening three tournaments of the season. And he's headed for potentially a top 10 finish here in Hong Kong. And this is Lee Westwood for the Majestics for birdie at 14. The Majestics already to 22 under par, two back of the cliques for a position on the podium. ¿Qué hierro tienes? Vale, pero vamos a hablar de dónde la queremos dejar exactamente. No puede ser rodando por ahí. O sea, exactamente donde me dices. Pues píntamela. Por ahí tiene que ir muy sólido y vas a meter en juego el borde de la izquierda. Sí, pero a ver. No es más jugar un golpe que esté a 50 metros. ¿Prefieres llegar a sí. tirar hacia Green? Pero mentalmente duro no puedo, tengo que chipearla casi. Está bien. Vale, venga. Silence, please. Silence. You, you referenced it, Jerry, a few moments ago. Um, did somebody that pulled him aside and gave him a, a, a bit of a pep talk or a talking to or a kick up the backside or an arm round the shoulder. We don't know what it was exactly. But he made the point in the press conference that at 23 years of age, he's still a young pro, really. It's hard to know and, and look at himself to see how he's behaving. But someone's obviously got in his ear about it, and uh, he's taken it on board, which is all he can do. John Rahm has reached the tee at two after that opening birdie. Playing 131, today, today's whole location's on that front left side of the green. This is one of those greens that have runoffs on every corner. He's got a gap wedge. Winds down and off the right. He can certainly go right at it with his fade and just hold it off in the wind. This is looking pretty good. Well, he said he wanted to give Abe Anter a scare. He could be two under before Anter reaches a green. For the day, here is Abe Anter. Second shot at the first. Oh, you, need like to, got a gap. you need luck to win tournaments. And he got a gap and he was almost in the penalty area. Oh, that was a great break to start off with. Oh, it's, a, it's a tough pin. Is he going to go straight for it? It needs to go a bit. Good shot. Birdies already for Rahm for Smith, for Stenson. And the five balls have been pegged back by Ripper. Henrik Stenson off the second tee. Bit of a push there. Well, can the cleats get a very welcome podium finish? They may uh, yet win it. Martin Keimer, he's slowly returning to form. That was for birdie at seven. And the cleats at the moment in a tie for third with Torquay. And that's because Sebastian Munoz has just birdied three. Both teams 24 under, two back of our co-leaders, the Fireballs and Ripper GC. Cam with a wedge. This is the range that he's just so good at. He's got a lot of fans here in Hong Kong. They love him. He was here last year at the Hong Kong Open where he came in second to Ben Campbell, who's a reserve this week. Herbert of Ripper GC, second shot at 17. And it's a 
beauty. DJ with his third at 13, the par five. <laughs> A bit of DJ magic. We are at the first. This is Eugenio Chicada's third. Uh, lead group who teed off a few minutes after the other 51 players in our staggered shotgun start on Championship Sunday. See him playing for the left right break there. Played it very well. Answer will play next. Now, Live Golf continues to provide the most outstanding viewer experience in golf. Last week, we unveiled the first iteration of our groundbreaking Any Shot, Any Time initiative. It's available on the web right now at livegolfplus.com. Every group on the course will be covered with live AI-informed graphics. You can choose to see every shot of your favorite player or switch from group to group for an amazing second screen experience. Uh, later this year, we will expand the feature to include the Live Golf Plus app on all devices. There will also be Team viewing with a four box and any shot callback featuring replays with a click of a button. Yeah, I'll see that. Yeah. Third shot for Abe. He was born in McAllen, Texas. He grew up back across the border in Reynosa, Mexico, and then the family moved him back at the age of 14 to attend high school his English wasn't particularly good at that stage and when he came to college golf no offers he eventually started at Odessa Junior College that's Friday night lights territory before going to Oklahoma and that is a really really good putt. shined at Oklahoma ended up his career there with the second lowest stroke average in school history behind Anthony Kim Anthony Kim yeah Henrik is for a birdie. He's switched his grip this week. He's gone left hand low. Ooh. Back to one and Harold Varner to get one closer. Green at 17, and already, how long have we been playing? 15 minutes less than this to give Ripper GC the lead. They trailed by three at the start of play, and they've hit the front already, and Lucas Herbert gets to seven under par. He had a 64 yesterday. A lot of teams bunched up there. That was going to be a very volatile leaderboard throughout the day. Now, John Rahm for a birdie, birdie start. Oh, this is certainly a very makeable one. Jerry, uphill, he got a good read from Stenson's putt that went past the hole. If he can get off to a birdie birdie start, I'm sure it's going to put some pressure, especially with the par five. Back to the first, Jakara for par. Big Solid putt. start. Big putt right there. You can see it, a little fist pop. AK, a 72 yesterday, his best round of his comeback, and he's tied for third on the greens in putting. Second shot into 16. He's starting to hit some golf shots and getting a little more dialed in in the distance control as well, knowing how far it's going. Papa for Sergio at nine. Ooh. Not a good start for the fireballs. Answer made his par at one. This is the second green, Henrik Stenson. For his par. Oh. Birdie bogey start for the Majestics man. Sergio for bogey over at nine. Cam Smith, this will be a good birdie. Spoke to his coach, Grant Field. He said, something you don't know 
about Cam is he walks really hard pre and post round. Everyone thinks he's pretty chill, but he's a hard worker. Spent some time on the range yesterday after shooting a really good round of golf. Jerry, I believe you call him Houdini with his club? Yeah, he's not human. Well, maybe so. Boy. Gives that a wrap. Well, Abraham Anser put on a display in round two, hitting all 18 greens in regulation, making eight birdies. His performance put the entire field on notice that he's ready to win his first Live Golf League title. Oh, Abraham Anser, that is simply magnificent. Really happy with the ball striking and the game plan. I felt like I executed uh, what we envisioned in every, pretty much every shot, which is really nice. Beautifully done by Abraham Anser. That's not that easy a shot. It's playing beautifully. Yes. I was able to capitalize as well on the greens. So no complaints. Really happy and trying to do the same for tomorrow. 15 under par. He will be taking a five-stroke lead into Championship Sunday. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully tomorrow we finish, finish really strong and uh, see a little bit more of the city. A few stats for Abe Anser here, Jerry. Yeah, strokes gained uh, for the season through three events and two days and this week. And obviously off the tee, he's always good at hitting fairways. Strokes gained combines hitting fairways. What you make from their distance as well. He's first on the green. He's sixth. That's a huge improvement. But uh, medium and long approaches are major improvements. Shockingly, though, well down the field in short approach at 33rd this week. Um, no secret why he's getting it done. It's a ball striker's paradise, as they say, with old style courses like this that aren't really long. And he is a ball hitting Jesse, as an old friend of mine used to say. <laughs> Matt Jones to save par at three for the leaders by two Ripper GC. That wasn't pretty. Green's no. a little faster today, David. 11-4 yeah. on the stent meter. That just went off in his hand. AK for birdie at 16. He's entered the International Series in Macaw next week. Really wants to play some golf. Amazing how quickly things change. And he is bucking the trend of poor starts. AK starts with birdie. That's Sebastian Munoz earlier. So K have raced into second place, a tie with the Fireballs. They're four under par already. And the swing with the Fireballs at this early stage is already seven shots. Go ahead, please. And this guy too. Please, sir, come here. No, no, no puedes hablar. Vale. 124. El viento ayuda. Sí, unos cuatro metros. Izquierda, derecha o derecha? Así, izquierda, derecha un poco. Solo ese te ayuda más a ti. A mí me gusta este palo. Sí, me gusta uno normal con este. ¿Ok? Venga. Jerry, you're right. The greens are quicker. I spoke to our super this morning, Darry Costa, who's done a fabulous job. He said they were running 12-4 early this morning, but by now they should be down to 11-6. Ish, and if you're long on this pin, it's a treacherous one. Like that. On the tier three is John Rahm. First of the two par fives on the golf course. Really important to make a four here. Yeah, David, and the first step is to hit the fairway. 312 to carry that right side bunker. It is playing downhill. Quartering up your right, bro. It's a target. Just That's perfect. Area, right, love it, mate. Come into it, eh? Harold's on the tier two. It's straight at it. Doesn't hit a lot of iron shots offline. Oh. Now it's the turn of our leader, Abraham Anser. Mm -hmm. That was a fabulous two putt. 
back on the first green. Yeah, he got lucky with his tee shot there, but was able to take oh, advantage of it, Tom. He certainly did, David. He could have been in big trouble. So he's got a pitching wedge here, only 131 yards downwind. It's a, not a big one. In fact, it's it's a very soft one. It took a long while to get going last season after winning the Saudi Invitational. Careful. Best finishes. Careful. That'll be like oh. lightning from there. And it ends up on a little downslope too. That'll be awkward. His best live finishes came in consecutive events in August and September. Tied three in Bedminster, tied for fifth in Chicago. Here's Waco Neiman seeing off at eight. This is a moment ago. Oh no. Waco Neiman with the ace. Oh, he's not out of it. Two wins in the opening three events of the season, and Waco with an ace. He's eight under par. What a moment for the man of the season so far in the Live Golf League. Phew. Adrian Moronk on the tee at five. Fifth ace, Arlo, in live golf history, right? Fifth ace uh, and one in the promotions event. Correct. And the first since Mike Ober, Richard Bland. He's holed out a couple of times so far this 14th season. 14th hole the first round. Yeah. yeah. And in round one, too. This is Caleb Surratt of Legion 13. That's uh, for birdie at 14. Matthew Wolf, who missed uh, last week, he withdrew actually after the start in Jeddah through illness. He's back here in Hong Kong, and that is beautifully judged. Also for birdie at 14 for Matthew. The range goats, though, sadly for you, David, struggling down in 11th place. Yeah. You saw how fast that putt was for Matthew Wolf from behind the hole at two. That is exactly what Anser has to deal with, and he's already through two holes missed as many greens as he has the previous two rounds combined. Waco's ace has got Tordeke into the lead. Back to the eighth tee. Scott Vincent. Right on the bubble, David, of those points, and those are so important. 24 players get points each week. Finish outside that top 24 at season's end. There are no guarantees. Abraham answer his second at two. And there's the first tester of the day there. Four, four and a half feet down the slope. Flushing it golf on the X, even a five shot lead will still be hard work to get over the line with this chasing pack. Ram looks like he's on a mission to win his first live event today. Chikara now for birdie to get within four. Now this is quick. He's given this as the maximum amount of break by the looks of it. Just going to try and trickle it into the front edge. Wind's picking up, guys. And it's a cool wind. That will make things even more interesting if it starts blowing harder. Let's uh, take you back a few moments, and why not? Welko Neiman, who has produced some quite magnificent moments already this season. This was his tee shot at eight. One, two, three, and in. Beautifully done by Welko Neiman, and it gave Torque the win. 14 titles for them last season. They didn't win the season ending team title. That was Bryson DeChambeau's band of brothers, the Crushers, but 
that they get their first win of the season here. They're six under par already. That's a swing of nine against the Fireballs, who led by three overnight. Harold Varner, a little curly one here. Could be a two-shot swing if he can pop this one in. It needs to break, it needs to break. This week, Live Golf and Ironheads GC collaborated with the Golf Association of Hong Kong to visit students at SKH Wing Chun Primary School, which has been part of the Short Golf School program since 2014. The Short Golf School program has given hundreds of students their first experience with golf through physical education classes and instructional lessons, both in school and at local courses, including the Hong Kong Golf Club. During their visit, the players gave the students a chipping demonstration and then joined them for a game to test the skills that they'd learned. This experience, thanks to Ironheads GC, is aligned with Live Golf's potential unleashed, making a positive impact in communities around the world. To the fourth, and Matt Jones. Answer did make that slightly tricky par, but a two. Well, now, the fourth is only 288 yards, and players have not been hitting it to right here to where Matt Jones and wonder what he hit off the tee to get it this close to the green. And it's worked out quite nicely for him. To the third, and... John yes, Rahm, Sue That was a fantastic drive by John. I just overheard Adam Hayes saying that tree, that's sort of in the line of the pin and shouldn't be an issue and that he can take an aggressive line if he wants to. A little breeze. Live Golf League merchandise is flying off the shelf. Get yours at any Live Golf event by visiting the merchandise tent. Who knows, you might even run into two-time champion golfer of the year, Greg Norman. Or do your shopping with a click of a button at shop.livegolf.com, the Live Golf online store. Grab a Legion 13 cap, Fireballs, quarter zip. Look at the lines there today. Majestic t-shirt, maybe a four aces polo, and uh, Greg put a shift in behind the registers and signed a few items as well earlier on, posed for a few photos. Shop.livegolf.com. Chikara off the third tee. Oh, that's a good bounce. That's a great bounce. Be in, should be a hair off your right as well. You just hit that good. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's that's a good start. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now Harold. on Friday, 66 yesterday, finished 54th and last in Mayakoba in the season opener. He says it shows true character in how you respond. I love responding. Oh. Says he's got his mojo back, but where's this going? And there's trouble down the left there. That's some deep, dark woods. A moment ago, Carlos Ortiz to stretch Torque's lead. Birdie at four. Recent winner in the international series in Oman. That was 
a par putt at nine for Mark Leishman. So a drop shot for Ripper GC. They're in a tie, a three-way tie for second place with the fireballs and the cliques. Two behind Torquay. Here's Abe. Club and back compared to the other two players. Yeah, he's going with three wood. I think that stays short of that fairway bunker. That's it. Yeah, it's perfect. One or two early signs of nerves from Abraham Anser, but still bogey three through 38 holes. He leads by five. <laughs> Apparently, Henrik Stenson hit that ball into that fan's pocket and maybe even crushed his sandwich. Did you get that man to run to the hole quickly? I just, <laughs> I just spoke with the fan, uh, the spectator. He said he felt a little something, like got hit. And he's like, yeah, it hurt a little, but I didn't realize it went in my pocket. So put his hand in his pocket and found Stenson's ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Houdini trick of its own. A lot of magic happening. Yeah, officials will determine uh, where the man was standing, yeah. and uh, he'll drop it from there. You only place it in that situation if you know exactly where the ball was. Impossible to know. <laughs> it's in a guy's pocket. I saw a, a pro uh, called Jimmy Murphy hit a bunker shot into his own shirt pocket once. <laughs> Clipped the face of the bunker in front of him, shot up in the air, and went straight down into his Munsingwear shirt pocket. This is Rob's third. In those days, David, that was a two-shot penalty. Yes. It's a rather more difficult birdie opportunity for John Rahm than he might have expected. Yeah, he's... Self-talk on that shot isn't all positive. Cleeks have dropped a shot. Martin Keimer with a five at the par four ninth to drop out of that tie for second. Excuse me, folks, right here. Can you make a way? Thank you, thank you. Well, Cam Smith may play first, but we've seen something uh, quite extraordinary, Sue, out here with Henrik Stenson. I know. He said it's. I overheard him saying to the spectator, it's happened to him a couple of times. <laughs> the ball landed in the fan's pocket. He does hit a high ball flight, so. So I shoot off the umbrella. Like within a, within a club here, yeah. 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 Can everybody yeah. start yeah. moving yeah. back yeah. slowly? Yeah. Thank you. Well, Tord K in the early stages are playing beautifully, and they're in the lead in the team contest by two. Waco Neiman's birdie put at six. It would get way better for Waco at eight. But before that, Sebastian Munoz. His birdie put at four. Todd K, six under par as a quartet already, but look at this at eight. The par three. And it's sensational. Twice winner already this season. We've only had three events. And it's got Waco to eight under par on the fringes of perhaps challenging for the individual title. But he's the captain of Todd K, and they lead by two. Stand Everybody still. stand, please. A little shy there from Henrik. He would have wanted that much closer. Sentimental favorite amongst our broadcast crew, Richard Bland, just playing the best golf of his life at age 50, now 51. And constant points earner, Arlo, always yep. getting points. So consistent, isn't he? He's counted in 30 yeah. straight rounds as well. There's one. You know, Harold Vaughan found the... For that trap on the right there. 
penalty area Renaton's on the left Renaton's there. Surely, He's yeah. dropped it out. He's yeah. playing his third shot from you here. You can sort of see the right edge of it. It's like right edge of that red bush. Okay. We'll head up to the green and Cam Smith for eagle. Yeah, hit a beautiful three wood in the right center of this fairway. You can see the green. Just picked the line, played a nice high draw. And this is going to be a right to left putt. The greens have sped up, Jerry. They look a lot quicker today. Yeah, the officials giving it just uh, two more inches in, on the stint meter, but boy, they just they just run out that little extra. They're drier too, even though we've had some rain. They look it. Back down there in the left rough, Harold Farner has punched out, played his third up short of the green. That's a tap in for birdie for Cam, and he is in a five way tie for second on 10 under. The other par five on the golf course, David Pooge on 13. Next to the green out three, and can John Rahm start putting even more pressure on Abraham Answer? This for Birdie. Uphill right to left. Two narrow misses at two and three after starting with a birdie. Paul Casey on the second tee. Solid week for Paul, 66 on Friday, 67 yesterday. And he knows the importance of all four scores if the Crushers want to go back to back. And that's a birdie opportunity for him. Henrik Stenson, this for a birdie. Put a new putter in the bag this week, along with a new style of putting. It's gone left hand low. Interesting. He just switched again. Yeah, yeah. That was right hand low. Maybe he's switching it around. Well, Hemrick has started birdie, bogey, birdie. He's at 10 under now. The Majestic's in fifth, 23 under. That's only two strokes back of a first podium finish in 19 events. Answer with the four hybrid. No point in trying to land this at the green. I don't think he's going to be able to get there with the four hybrid. Just run it to the right edge of the green. Left bunker, front bunker is not good. This is a good line. If it kicks a little left, it could be. It, will it reach the bunker? I think that is absolutely ideal. Yeah, that's what he was trying to do. Good shot. Simple chip straight up the. Putting surface. No, no te digo que no, pero vamos a hablar de un número exacto. No vamos a pegar el 4 así sin más. Ok, baja 3, son 202. La bandera está aquí. Vale, tenemos 202. Me encanta. Sí. Vamos. No, different strategy, I would imagine, for Chakara from down this far. He should try and land this on the green. It's a winner. Oh boy, this could be really good. Yes, it is. That's about as close as he could possibly get it from there. Wonderful, wonderful shot. Chikara has an opportunity to close the gap on his teammate, Abe Answer. 
Mito Pereira in the fairway at 16, one over for the week 48 position. He's playing for the team. Long ways from earning any individual points. Anaban Lahiri is on the T at 12. One of three crushers to go really low on championship Sunday in Jeddah last week. 64 in the final round for him. Charles Howell, 64. Bryson DeChambeau, 62. It was an incredible comeback. The biggest in live golf team competition history. Well, the cliques have started reasonably well. Two under on the day so far. They're in fourth spot. Adrian Morong for birdie at four. He's one under par for his round so far. And this is Dustin Johnson, who's trying to get the four aces into contention. That was for birdie at 15, and they're certainly not out of it. They're in a tie for fifth spot, the four aces, and they're two shots back at the podium. That's Morong's approach. At number six, and that should be another birdie. Matt Jones has seen some trouble at five. This is for par. This is the third green. Abraham Anser will be first to play. Fantastic atmosphere out here. Hong Kong has turned out for this last day. And Abe Anser, really, that's the exact spot he wanted the ball to end up in. Got the full length of the green to work with. Good lie, slightly uphill the whole way. Don, generally speaking, who do you think has got the most support out there or are the, the crowds here just enjoying green. seeing top-level golf? Here. Freedom. I don't think they've got any favourites, maybe not in this last group, maybe up ahead in the group from Smith and Stenson, but uh, not very biased at all. They just want to see good golf, like he said. Sounded heavy. Yeah, it was. Carlos Ortiz for par at five. To keep Todd K too clear, and he makes it. One of his teammates is Sebastian Munoz. This is his third shot at six. Nicely done, and he would make par. To the fourth and John Rahm. I heard him. Nice big sigh walking off that third green. Pretty sure he knows he can't afford to be making pars and par fives today. Especially after that drive. Now, gap wedge. Whole location's back left today. Everything slopes right to left, so certainly don't want to miss this left. It'll be treacherous up and down. Just right of it. Get in the hole! Let's go back to the green of three. Answer to not lose his turn here. He'll be first to go. This for Birdie. Oh, goodness me. Oh. 
Chapman with Chikara in there with a realistic chance for Eagle. The cleats are tied for second. Calais Samoya, who had an electric start on Friday, he was five under through his first six holes. Then he didn't count in the end, but that is rolled in for birdie at 12, and the cleats are 25 under, two back of Torquay. Captained by this man, Waco Neiman, with an ace already on eight today. moment here on yo, Championship Sunday. Yo, eh? Yo la tiraría centro izquierda. Le veo como un poco como es tiene espelo a favor y cuesta abajo amagando izquierda derecha, pero nunca la sacaría del hoyo. That's easy for him to say. It's an eagle opportunity to cut Abans's lead to 3. There'll be some roar if this drops. Mm, it's always left. He sneaks one closer. David Pooch for birdie at 13. Remember, he made a double earlier on in his round on Championship Sunday. And that's good news for the Fireballs. They are one over today, the overnight leaders, but they're back into a tie for first. Mark Leishman has the Rippers at 26 under. That's a tie for third. Chikara tapped in. So any second now, the pylon will update to the fireballs retaking the lead on 28 under par. Harold for par after visiting the hazard. It's an ugly six on one of the easiest holes on the golf course. AK for birdie at 18, the top four teams are separated by one stroke. Wild card. Only his second tournament back after a hiatus of almost 12 years from professional golf. And he started really well here on Championship Sunday. Two under through four holes. Cam, for a birdie here. Watched him warm up on the putting green. He has the same routine week in, week out. His coach, Grant Field, said that's what makes him so good. If you look at all these players out here, for the amateurs watching at home, they just stick to the same things all the time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all the way to Sunday. Was warming up, trying to get the energy to the ball. No deceleration. Nice tempo. Chikara, after that birdie, is on the tier four. He's closed the gap to Abe Anser to four shots. They've moved the tee up 12 yards today. It's a viable option if you want to go for it. I won't imagine Anser's going to go for it, but maybe Varner. 249 direct line to the front yeah. edge, Tom. Yeah, and because they've moved it up, now the trees immediately in front of this tee are not really in play. You don't have to cut it as much.
Well, the Live Golf League is always looking to improve the fan experience, both during the broadcast and on site, to see the best players in the game for yourself in 2024. Yeah, uh, just scan the QR code on the screen for tickets sure. to future events. Sure. We'll be in Miami at Doral's Blue side. Monster the yellow first side. week in April. Yeah. Then it's on yeah. to Adelaide, Australia yeah. and yeah. Singapore, where it's a bit warmer for Suan in the weeks that follow. Get your tickets now and enjoy the golf. I like how you got that one in there, Arlo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've layered up sufficiently today, haven't you? I, I, never, have. I never thought I'd say I, I'm flying home to the UK to experience some better weather. I had to do some shopping last night. John, you got a good read from Henrik's putt. So we'll move to his left. Slips by for John Rahm, who remains 10 under par. Well, he can't say he hasn't had chances. Oh, he's had four. He's made one, yeah. Four very good chances. Graham McDowell rejuvenated since joining Brooks Kepka's Smash GC. He's on the tee at eight. Oh, not another. Oh. Smash started the day 11 back, and they were quite aware of the fact that that's what the Crusher started back last week and went on to win by four. Lucas Herbert is a ripper. I'm sure this quartet are thoroughly looking forward to getting to Adelaide, where there will be thousands cheering them on. This is second shot at two. It's the par three. He's seven under for the tournament. Ripper at the moment in a tie for third. <laughs> Carlos Ortiz in the fairway bunker out at number six. Pretty close to the lip, but not an issue. Right foot slipped just a little in the transition, but sounded very clean. And it was. I'll give it one up. 111. Nine off covers right here. 102. Yeah. It goes straight out of. An aerial view, uh, a beautiful golf course. This is the fourth fairway. Then here's Harold. So hard. Oh. Yeah. Didn't catch it. Wow. Wow. Pretty close to that number, a little bit less than that, like 104. Finishing a little right of it. All right, two shot. Abe answer next. Where Harold's ball finished, it's not a bad spot for eight ounce. So maybe land it right there, or just a few feet past it. Just don't want to be long or left here. Looks good. Yeah. Well, there's a reasonable chance of a first birdie of the day for Abraham Answer. 90, 90 me encanta. It's just a gap wedge. You've got to be pinpoint accurate. That's got to sit down. Oh. A foot left. Yeah. That's 25 yards off the green. Jerry, I know you are fascinated with the analytical side of the game, and we are uh, statistically due a team playoff. Let me tell you that the top four teams right now are separated by a single shot. The top eight teams are separated by five shots. Richard Bland at nine, third shot. He plays for the Cliques, who are in a tie for third. Yes, I love the analytical side. Numbers don't lie. 
unless they're part of a golf ranking system. Matt Jones. Sixty-four on the opening day for Jonesy. Sixty-eight yesterday. He started eight under par seven back. John Rahm, T at five, playing 180. He's got seven iron, hole location today, front right. Right is not the place to miss it today. There's a TV tower just about 15 feet left of it. That would be his line. He's improved the most from this distance compared to last week in Jetta. This needs to keep fading. Mito Pereira, his second shot at 17. He is one under par for his round. Torque are six under so far. They're the big movers. They're tied for first with the overnight leaders, Fireballs, on 27 under par. Harold Varner for Pat Four for Birdie. Ian Poulter, one of the three Majestics captains, trying to get them onto the podium, and they are in the mix on 23 under par. It's been an excellent week for Ian Poulter. A pair of 66s so far. He won the Hong Kong Open right here in 2010. Top fives in the year before and the year after. Waco, just a wedge of 10. A little right of the hole. And that, well, call it an unforced error. That's absolutely redundant, but big mistake for no reason right there. And he's not happy, understandably. Chikara, his turn, Dom. It is. And boy, I'm sure he couldn't see the ball from where he was playing his second. I'm sure he was mighty relieved when he walked up and saw it still on the green. And now he's left himself a very makeable putt uphill. Just a slight break from the left. So Abe Anser has an opportunity to re-establish a five-stroke lead. Here's Dustin Johnson at 16. Four under already today, DJ. Because of this, through five holes. Four aces challenging for the podium. Hong Kong Golf Club Saturday at Live Golf Hong Kong was both frenetic and fantastic. Amazing play, top stars, big crowds, huge energy. This was special. We concur. Today could be even better. Abraham Anser for his first birdie on Championship Sunday. Just hung it out there too far. He remains bogey free through his opening 40 holes of the week. David Pooch, this on 14 for birdie. Oh, well, that would have given the fireballs the lead. Pooch a little out of sorts today. He's one over par so far, having teed off at 10. The Hong Kong Golf Club has been a fantastic venue for us, and Abraham Anser is one of many Live Golf League players who competed all over the world this off-season, but he's the only one that captured a gold medal. When was the last time you had one tournament? A few weeks ago. <laughs> Let's call it a month. I won the Daniel Championship in Epic Creek and the Mauritian Open at La Reserve Golf Links. I had a few more tournaments than I thought, but it was good off season. I mean, obviously, my goal was to get into the into the Open. I, being outside the world ranking, I knew Australia was giving a spot for for the Open. Really going to make their presence felt this weekend. You know, I played practice around with Shaw before the Joburg Open, and obviously, you know, won that event, and then. The next week, you know, one again. <laughs> Being able to get a gold medal in Chile for the Pan American Games, playing against some of my great buddies, like 
Nima and Munoz and Mito, Carlos was there as my, my, my teammate. It was really cool. This is a world-class display of talent and poise. I was a bit lucky to win two in a row, but it was super fun. And then, you know, Louis flew all the way from America to come and make sure I didn't win three in a row. Being in that position in Australia and ended up winning, it was a great way to end the year. Carlos Ortiz also won in Oman two weeks ago in the International Series and Waco has received invites from the Masters and the PGA. He's already qualified for the Open courtesy of his victory at the Aussie Open before Christmas. And hopefully more will follow. Yes. John Rahm a little energetic there. To the seventh green and Sebastian Munoz for birdie and for Torque to take the lead once more. This would get Munoz within four of the individual lead. And that oh, is goodness. agonizing. How does that not drop? Teammate and captain, Waco Neiman, his third shot. Don't try this at home unless you've practiced it. Using the toe of the putter, angling it down completely within the rules of golf, unless the toe was designed to actually hit the golf ball. It's not brilliantly done. Yeah, that, that is easy to make yourself look like an idiot doing yeah. that. That was beautifully done. Alan Gibson, PGA, the form player in the world right now. Take a bow. Waco Neiman, victorious in Mayakoba, a four-hole playoff in virtual darkness against Sergio Garcia. It was rather more straightforward in Jeddah, a four-stroke victory last weekend. Cam Smith, this for a testing part. <coughs> Missed it left into that bunker. Did a beautiful job hitting it to this point. Everything flows to the right here. It's going to be really quick. Where he is, he watched John's putt just go five, six feet past. Really just have to get this one started. That's a thing of beauty watching him putt. Those touch putts where you have to marry the line and the speed perfectly to have a chance. Cam stays 10 under, five back. The Rippers stay on 26 under, tied for three. Now, can John Rahm match him? He looked pretty surprised at how quick that first putt was. He's hit some really good iron shots in these opening few holes. Burning the edges so far. Definitely wants to make this one. Yeah. That's much better from John Rahm. He stays at 10 under. the man uh, we dubbed the Polish Prince last weekend and opening round 62 but fell away after that in Jeddah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Two under par for his round so far which has helped the cliques into a tie for third. Torquay and the Fireballs cannot be separated. 
Wako Neiman for birdie at six for Todd K, who are six under par today. 27 under for the tournament. David Pooch for birdie at 13. The Fireballs, the overnight leaders by three, are one over today, but still tied for the lead. Answer on the tier five. With a six iron. I think that's a good club. It's certainly going to get him at least to the middle of the green. Well, this is headed to the left bunker. Double cross. Yeah. Set up for a little fade and just came over it. Quite as routine today for Abe Answer. Harold Barner next. With a seven iron. I think he's going to go flag hunting. That's such a dangerous flag to hunt. Oh, he's pulled it too. That's going to be bunker. He's going to catch the bank and roll in. Par 5, 13th, and Sergio Garcia taking a go at the green. That'll be for Eagle for Sergio, who are in third place last season after finishing second in Singapore. That was event five. They dropped out of the top four after Tulsa, which was event six, and then spent the final seven events in sixth place. And they reached the semi-finals in Miami. Elsewhere, the Ironheads. Trying to make a move on Championship Sunday, but down in 12th at the moment. They are three under. Collectively so far today, Yunichiro and Kazuma. How about that? That was his second at 15, the par four. Charles Schwartzel, tied for second in Jeddah last week. His best result since the first ever Live Golf tournament in London in 2012. Uh, 2022, I should say. And that was for Birdie at 16. It's Mark Leishman off the 12th tee. Fifth green. I just made up a, an entire year there, David. 2020 2012. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been a leap year. Two at six, John Rahm. David Pooge, his third of 15. No, I'm not sure why that will be his third unless he visited the hazard there. Good shot though. Whoa, got some zip on that. What are we looking at, Tom? Well, it's a big help for Answer to see this shot first. I was watching John Rahm's putt from this side of the green, and it is seriously quick. Barna using the slope. That is a touch of class. <clears throat> David Ortiz. Well, it was a great hitter. Carlos for the Ortiz. Boston Red Sox. I do that yes. at least once a week. <laughs> Red Sox fan, you see. I think it helped Abraham answer so much to see what Varna did. And he's looking a little bit left too, but nowhere near as much as Varna. Oh, this has got to sit down. 
Oh, this has got a zip. Oh, it did. Now, that is not the shot that he meant to play. Got it a little too close to the ball. Flew it there and a band and spun our leader. It. Staring at his first birdie of the week, Adrian Moronk on eight for birdie for the cliques. But they did tie the lead because of this. Martin Keimer, their captain for birdie at 12. Marty Keimer, who started here with a 64, his lowest round in 60 Live Golf League. Uh, regular season events. He's five under overall, and the cliques are in a three-way tie for first on 27 under. Where DJ pops in another one at 17. DJ going nuts today already. It's five, five under after six. Yeah. Back to Abraham Answer. He's actually not on the putting surface, so can't clean the ball. And he's not made a bogey yet this week. He's got to hit a really good putt to avoid that first bogey. Looks a different player today, doesn't he? Yep. The nerves are jangling. It won't help if this doesn't go in. Stand still, please. Just stand. Stand. He's... He's quite comfortable being the underdog. He has stated many times. He's known nothing but consistent success as he's grown through the game. This is a big test. Well, it's taken 41 holes in Hong Kong for Abe Anser to blink his first bogey of the week, and his lead is down to three. Elsewhere, Matt Jones for birdie at seven. Ripper, 27 under par, and the team competition is electric. The top seven are separated by three shots. Oh, Munoz grazes the edge at eight. Back to five. Oh, how does that miss, says Chikara. A real chance there. Well, the fireballs may be recovering from a somewhat indifferent start. They had a three-stroke lead uh, coming into championship Sunday. That was uh, Carlos Ortiz. Carlos Ortiz with a birdie, and that gets them to 28 under, so they do lead by one. They are seven under par today. Taylor good for birdie. I can't remember a team leaderboard like this on Championship Sunday. No, not at all. And with four scores counting for the first time in 2024. John, second shot into the sixth. Has a false front just below this hole. We're about 10 paces on. You want to definitely carry that. He's got nine iron. Wind coming off the right. in was Cam Smith and this is how he did that a couple of moments ago. That's Neiman with his second at 11. Go. 
At this point, David, he has not counted himself out of a third victory this year. Hmm, Mito Pereira find the water. That's his fourth shot at the third. Todd K drop a shot. Just the four way tie for first now <laughs> on 27 under. Shot from Carlos Ortiz. I'm on the six. So? Yes, sir. Not too much? No. Back turns. I don't. I don't believe so. We're not. We, I don't. We don't have any wind, but we didn't really have any wind yesterday. Okay. We got. If you go 185 is the minimum left side. If you go at the flag, 190 is the minimum. Okay. 195 flag. Six T, and I saw where John Rahm's tee shot finished up. If he hit driver there on this hole, and that's all he got, it means this course is playing a lot longer than it did the first couple of days. Oh, this is miles right. It's headed to a fifth T. Hmm. Ian Poulter, desperate to get the Majestics onto the podium. And he's playing his part. He's two under today, the Majestics 26 under. They're only a shot out of first place, but they find themselves in fifth. That was for Birdie at eight. Graham Dow flying once again on Championship Sunday. That was for Birdie at nine. It was his 65, which was the real game changer. He was the MVP in Las Vegas as Smash took the title. John Rahm at six for, for Birdie. Good crowds out here watching this group. I spoke to Alberto Sanchez, who's on the bag for David Puj. They went to college together, and John Rahm, I meant. Did four years in room together for three. He said that John was the best golfer on that team by far. The first time they met, John Rahm may well be fulfilling his promise to try and scare Abraham Anser on Championship Sunday, and he's back to within three. He was six back when he teed off. Oh, Chikara reloading off the 16. Just a provisional in case it's a lost ball, probably not knowing what's over there. Dom knows what's over there. He's played 4,000 rounds Yeah, of golf I here. can't believe it's a lost ball. He's head right to the middle of the fifth tee. He might be on the bank short of it. Waco Neiman to get Todd K into the lead to break that four way tie on 27 under par. And Waco, he's four under today through six, nine under for the competition. Todd K lead by one. Lucas Herbert off after that one on the third green. Well, Championship Sunday shaping up to be another thriller. Answer leads by three. Tour K by one. Aerial shots of the Ramling area here of Hong Kong doesn't get you give you much of a sense of just how built up and bustling the city is. So many high rises, yet the public transport here is absolutely phenomenal. So 
despite its population of seven and a half million in a very condensed area traffic is all right yeah less traffic than we have in Orlando and <laughs> a trillion people in a square block it's amazing fantastic nine iron into this whole location today there's a leaderboard right behind that whole location I just saw answer dropping a shot this is a right to left putt Charges on Cam Smith, John Rahm, Eugenio Chicada within three of overnight leader Abraham Anser. Now Anser on the tier six. Waco on the tee at 12. He's uh, enjoyed the par threes today. Now only five back, individually. He's already aced par three eighth. Matt Jones for birdie at eight, which would get Ripper into a tie with Torquay for first place. Nicely done. Oh, he's so gifted with the putter. Has been his entire career. These are vital moments on Championship Sunday. So without a birdie so far, came into round three with a five-stroke lead. That's only three. Dom, get us caught up with uh, Eugenio Jacada. Yeah, he's he's just short of the fifth tee, the forward tee on the fifth tee in the rough in the cow grass. He is completely blind. He cannot see the green whatsoever. But he's got. A he's got a lie where he can get at least. 1-6-2 a bandera, 1-5-0. 1-5-0 entrada. Espérate un poco, eh. Carlos Ortiz at the eighth. Back with Chakara. Yeah, he's just trying to... Excuse me, guys. He can get a seven or eight iron over the trees, but he, he probably needs a seven, so he needs to hit this hard to get the elevation. But if he catches a flyer... Took a filthy swipe out of it. Looked like it went left to where he was aiming it off the get go. I believe it's right over there somewhere. Yeah, Find the bunker there. Answer. Yeah, in the left rough. I didn't get a chance to see the lie, but it looks okay. It's a seven iron for Abe. Low, but online. Oh, that's, will that roll off the green speed today? It would, you would think it will. Yep, yeah, that's gone. Uh, it won't go too far off this green. You sound like a man that's experienced that a lot here, Dom. Oh, it's still moving. Now Barner. Well, it's left again. Will it catch the green? It's getting interesting here on Sunday, David. Yeah.
to 14 and Sergio Garcia's third. And a difficult one. He's got to come up over a lot of fringe here into the grain, up and over and then downhill. Five balls, one over par so far today. Chicago's one under, Sergio's level par. Both Anser and Pouge are one over. So what was a three-stroke lead, but it's evaporated. They are in fourth on 27 under. A three-way tie for the lead between Torquay, the Cliques and Ripper on 28 under. Didn't need much more, but that's not good. Richard Bland delivering again. The cliques are in a three-way tie for the team lead on 28 under par. What a performance by them. Martin Keimer is their captain. Richard Bland playing beautifully today. That was uh, for birdie at 11. He's two under par. Three-way tie. Cliques, okay. Torquay and Ripper. How about John? Good ball. Oh, well, there's a that's a hazard in there. It's a little drain we can't see. Whether that's in it or not, we'll find out. Chikara has come up to the green. To be honest, not a bad result playing his second from where he did. It's got a release. Oh, it did. To the green at 12, and Waco Neiman is having a fabulous championship Sunday once again. This to give Torquay the lead. We're going to say that a lot today. Yes, you already have. And yeah. just, I mean, six holes in. That is going to continue to be the story. Number six, Abraham Anser right, with his third. Here. Hardly put a foot wrong the first two days. He's missed four greens out of the first six already today. <laughs> Championship Sunday. Does funny things to your mind. But certainly not a bad spot to be. are into the lead in this topsy-turvy battle in the team championship here in Hong Kong. 29 under par for them. That was Matt Jones once again for birdie at eight. Cameron Smith, his second shot into the seventh through the tall trees. Lovely. John Rahm has punched out just to this point. You'll let check. There's a hill, right? Yes, absolutely there is. Yep. Right. Neiman did make his par at 12. Well, he spoke to me yesterday in his post-round interview. He said he's been working really hard on his wedges and is hitting them really well. He needs to hit a good one here. 
to avoid dropping a shot. Brutal amount of spin on that. Jakara for par at six. Oh. A drop shot for him and for the fireballs. Ripper now two in front. Mark Leishman at 13 for birdie. And the Aussies are 30 under. Two clear of Torque and the Cliques. They're five under par today. And the fireballs are two over in the final round. Dave answers one individually for the fireballs. This for another par. Well, the Hong Kong Golf Club is one of the most prestigious courses in all of Asia. Lucky for us, our very own Don Boulay is a member here, and earlier he spoke about the club's rich history. The golf club was formed in 1889. In 1911, we leased this land here. So this property at Fan Ling started with the old course, and then the new course was built in the 50s, and then in the early 70s, the Eden course. So we have 54 holes here. Fan Ling is one of those historic golf courses here in the region, which is old school. It's not long, of course. It's only 6,700 yards. The Hong Kong Golf Club is a golf course that rewards Accuracy off the tee. Super tight fairways, the green complexes are very small. It's a sign of a good golf course because there's multiple ways to play it. It's not just whale driver on every hole. It's a lot of three irons and three woods off the tee trying to get in the right position. It's the kind of golf course that suits me really well because you have to think your way around it and if you're hair off, you're going to make some numbers. It reminds me a lot of Australia actually. The greens generally slope a lot from back to front. You need to leave yourself tons of uphill putts if you want to make birdies. I've played so many tournaments here through the years. Managed to win in 2010. To go back to a venue where you've won in the past, that's a benefit for Team Majestics this week. Maybe a Bryson could overpower this place. Yeah, why not? You know, maybe the, the Crushers are not favourites this week, but we weren't favourites going into the final round last week either. <laughs> they enjoyed that last week in Jeddah. The Crushers aren't doing too badly at all. 25 under par, that is a tie for fifth place. But all the players that had previously played here were looking forward to coming back. And all those that hadn't played here, almost to a man, have really enjoyed it. Richard Bland of the Cliques. That was his tee shot at 12 and a chance to get the Cliques back level with Ripper. Answer here, certainly playing for a low draw, and it's a quick one, it's in the bunker. Boy, that was a coat hanger right there. Ram for his par at seven. Martin Keimer, the captain of Cleeks for birdie at 13. And this got them a few moments ago into solo second on 29 under par. The Cleeks collectively are seven under. They trail Ripper GC by a stroke. Here's Cam at seven for birdie to re-establish a two-stroke lead for Ripper. It's a right to left putt. I spoke to his caddy, Sam Pinfall. Do you think he'll be watching that team leaderboard today? He goes, absolutely. One set win for Ripper. Got their solitary team win, and it was a dominant one in Bedminster last year. 11 shot victory. A team that in our inaugural season were called Punch GC. Mm -hmm. And Cam Smith got a hold of them. Couldn't sound any more Aussie than Ripper <laughs> GC. Carlos Ortiz, Torque. 
three back now. From a little under 200 yards into the difficult ninth. Stenson is to tie for a second. Similar line to Cam. Spoke to Lordy, his caddy. Says he switches his putting grip as and when he feels like it over the ball. Would have got the Majestics into a tie for third as well. Get caught up with uh, Anthony Kim. And that was a few moments ago. Another birdie. He's two under today. A wild card. Andy Ogletree on the green at 12. He is a high flyer, captained by Phil Mickelson, currently down in 13th place. Andy, three over par today. So the tee at eight and count. 56 and 18 is 74, up five to 79. Uh, 73. Covers up onto the flat directly line. That number is shorter if we're left of the pin. <laughs> Playing 189 today. Number eight, it's barely off the left, three. mostly down, bro. Like right there. It is, bro. And we're look where you're looking. That tree that's on the angle at halfway yep. up the hill. Yep. Love that. Come into it, man. It's the hardest green to hit. Only 38% of the field hit this green. Cam's got seven iron. Got to be really careful with today's hole location. On that right side of the screen, you got to really make sure you carry that falls front and keep this left of the hole. Anything short and right, it's going to roll all the way down into the rough. It's such a shit swing. Fuck me. Yeah, I'm not, not sure he liked that one. Yeah. Here's Abe Anser, our leader by three, and the individual pile on his second shot at seven. Got to play it with a big hook to get it to the green. Cannot go for the pin. Can't get over the trees, those paper box. Oh. It's turning slightly, Mike. Get to the front edge. Yeah, it's really difficult to hit a big hook out of a fairway bunker. Oh, he's got 70 feet. Not a bad shot. Well, it's a battle royale in the team competition. Uh, the top eight teams separated by only seven shots. It's uh, an excellent performance by Wako Neiman at the moment. That was birdie at 11. Tord K currently in third. This is Martin Keimer, the captain of the Cliques, who are making their move. They're in second place on 28 under. Lucas Herbert and the Ripper GC boys have got it to 30 under par, a lead of two. That was for birdie at four. John on the tee at eight. He's got seven iron as well. Let's just start this. 15 feet left. Chakara finds himself in a spot here. He's got a hook it as well, or punch it out towards the front. I think center he's of the green. I think he's far enough back there to go right over the top. That's straight right. at it. Is right he on. really? Right on. Good shot. Richard Bland for birdie at 12. Ooh. Ooh. Would have got the clicks back to within one of Ripper GC. Sebastian Munoz 
His second and 10, 133 yards from the rough. Out a three quarter swing with the wedge, and he stuck the finish. Little jumper. A moment ago, Lucas Herbert for birdie at five. This to pad the Rippers lead, which remains at two. Carlos Ortiz over at nine on the live line. It's for birdie. Let's head back to the seventh, and Abe Anser will be the first to play. I'll be interested to know how much break there is on this part if there was a live line on this one. Well, we have our resident live line in Don Boulay. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I'll let you know. About okay. 16 feet to the right. <laughs> Pretty good from there. Cam Smith on the green at eight. Yeah, he's on the drier part of that side of the green. Well, Cam harbors hopes of a double here in Hong Kong. Three back of Abe Answer. The Rippers lead by two. Harold Barner on seven. Yeah, he was in a divot. His caddy told me it came out like a six iron, even though he only hit a nine iron. And this is going to be quick. John Rahm for a birdie. It's going to be a left to right putt. As I was saying before, he went to college with Alberto Sanchez, and Alberto was telling me within moments of meeting him, he just knew that this guy was going to be a world-class player. No one knew what to expect from him. I watched him play a couple of holes and just was blown away at how good he was in college. Very gritty player, John Rom. He has a wisdom beyond his 29 years. Chikara for birdie at seven. He needs a boost, and so do the Fireballs, who have slipped down to fourth. They're two over par as a quartet today. The overnight leaders, they brought a three-stroke lead into Championship Sunday. Henrik. Eighth green. Hendrick Stenson has one for birdie. That's right. Let's see which grip he's going to go with for this one. Is it the cross grip or is it the normal grip? We'll find out very shortly. Another big championship Sunday moment. Abe Anser, who's one over for his round. This for par. That's a good two putt there. Maybe be settle his nerves down. Henrik Stenson for birdie at eight. That was a moment ago. It was a chance to get the Majestics into a tie for third. And now Cam Smith. This for a part. 
And to keep the Ripper boys two ahead. Spoke to Grant Field, his coach, and he said he hardly ever hits that left shot on the range. It's very much a situational result. If there's trouble on the right, that's his bailout. Ripper stay two ahead of the cliques. Another nice week for Graham McDowell. This is his birdie attempt at 11. Would have gotten him to uh, 10 under par, a narrow miss. He's two under today. Tied fifth in Las Vegas in our second event. Ten more is 86. 86 and 96. Helping got the ace. Right. The greens dot with a circle around it. Wako Neiman. All the greens birdie yellow pars and the rare bogey. One of them just over the back of the green as the rain drops begin to fall yet again. Just a little sprinkle. Those are forecasts to happen up. off and on throughout right. the day, unfortunately. We had a glorious day on Friday, didn't we? Yeah, and it's going to be great on Tuesday. <laughs> now then, Abe answer on the par three, eighth with a six iron. Uh, there is some rain, but it's not really affecting play whatsoever. Middle of the green for Abe. That's his aim point. Oh boy, is this right? Oh man, he, he's at the back right of the bunker too, oh coming boy, over the high point. Not the right spot to be right there. His swing is out of sync. Ripper captain, Cam Smith, on the third hardest hole, originally meant to be played as a par five for the members, just a three wood for Cam, it's 290 to that first bunker on the right, hole location today is on the left, so anything right center of this fairway would give him a good angle, oh that's left. It's okay on the fairway. Hello, Neiman. For birdie on 13. Elsewhere here at the uh, Hong Kong Golf Club, Cyril Hatton's having a, a good week. He's eight under par. This for birdie at 11 for Tyrrell. Legion 13, currently ninth place. 18 under par overall. They could yet get it together and surge up the pylon. Patrick Reed for birdie at 14. The four aces are having a good championship Sunday. They are six under par today, and they are 26 under in a tie for fourth. Here's captain Dustin Johnson. He's five under through his opening eight holes today, and there's another chance. This is the 16th green, and Calais Samoya from Finland. This for birdie to get the cliques to within one. Ever had two podium finishes in Bangkok 2022 and then finally last season in the final regular season event in Jeddah they finished in last place six times last year they went on a recruitment drive Adrian Moronk and Kelly Samoya in for Graham McDowell who went to smash and Bernd Wiesberger who went back to the DP World Tour here's Richard Bland one of the clique stalwarts second into 13 Oh, what a shot from Dickie B. Right into the heart of the par five green and a chance for Eagle. Can't stop him. 
Sebastian Munoz for par 10. Torque now three back. They stay there. Now, yeah, souvenir. And the recipients managed not to fall off a stool, like we saw yesterday. Now the cliques have dropped one. Moronk because of that at nine. That was just a few moments ago. This is the sí. eighth, and uh, es como Eugenio otro. Shikara. Yo a mí me gusta por debajo. No El suelo está mojado, es que te va a patinar. No se va a quedar enganchado. Well, Shikara has missed it in position Y, and answer in position Z. Oh, see ya. That's off the green on the other side. Uh, let's take a first look at Brooks Kepka today. His second shot at seven. Six under par for the competition. And his team smash not able to mount much of a rally today, Arlo. Mm. 65 on the opening day for Brooks. We thought he may be in contention. 67 yesterday. Jason Kokrak has struggled. 73 and 74 so far. Now then, Abraham answer at eight. <laughs> Take 15 feet past this pin if he tries to get too cute, could be back in the bunker. Oh. Well, that's exactly what he risked. Looked like he tried to bump it into the fringe there and try and get that close. And right now he has a head full of slamming doors. Ripper lead by three. Lucas Herbert. His second shot at six. <laughs> Terrific 64 for Lucas Herbert yesterday, who came in to the Ripper team as a replacement for Jed Morgan, who was relegated at the end of last season. Henrik, not driving the ball quite as well as he has been in the last couple of days. Flared a few out to the right, including this one. Hit the cart path and ended up this part of the golf course in the cow grass, as Dom calls it. Long way back for Hendrick. It's left. Oh, this is headed left. There's a little drain in there. Oh, crossed it. He's jumped, on the other side and jumped the jump. over it, yeah. See any possible way to get that next one on, so that'll take a better look than we got. Chikara's third shot at eight. Next to the ninth, and John Rahm. He drove it a little too far left on this fairway. He's blocked by some trees. He's going to have to hit a roping hook into today's whole location. He's got the ball way back in his stance. Oh, that is a good looking shot. Whoa. Oh, that's a peach. Beautiful 25, 30 yard draw. <laughs> What's that shot? Mm-hmm. Now, Cam. Yeah, I am. Coming down on. Okay. Come into that, bro. He's got a slightly better angle than John, but still a little blocked by the trees on the left. He's got six iron. It's a TV tower in the back. 30 feet right of the hole. Probably looking to start it there and play a draw. Oh. 
漂亮，哇，哎呀，太多了。Whilst that was happening, a bouncer for par at eight. And that's two drop shots for the man who had a five stroke lead at the start of play. And the lead is being eroded, and the team lead has gone as well to these fellas from down under. Ripper GC are five under par today. They have a lead of three over Tordecai in the cliques. This is uh, Lucas Herbert, his second into 17, a par four. Cam Smith is two under par for his round so far, and he's in contention and trying to hunt down a banter as well. That was for birdie at six. Matt Jones having a terrific week. This was a terrific putt at eight for birdie. So Ripper GC, who started the day three back of the Fireballs, who have slumped so far on Championship Sunday, they're having a really, really strong week, looking for their first team title of the season. And at the moment, they look like favourites, but there's a lot of golf to be played. Abraham Anser did make his bogey. This is Neiman. Oh, and another wonderful shot. That little moisture on the greens, not as much friction. That's Paul Casey. Lucas Herbert has this for birdie at six. Put Ripper four clear of Torque for now. Money. Well, it's the men from down under who are surging on Championship Sunday in Hong Kong. This is another birdie opportunity. It's Matt Jones at 10. Ripper's lead is four over Torque and the cliques. Let's take a look at the ninth hole, David, at Hong Kong Golf Club. Yeah, the ninth is a beauty, 493 yards. It's a par five for the members. These bunkers in the corner are in play. Tee shot needs a little draw. Then around the corner, through the big paper barks, and a long, thin green. In amongst the trees, we find Henrik Stenson. I don't know if he has that many options. There is a tiny window that he can maybe get through to play in the front right of the screen. That's where he's looking, Suan. Yeah. Be a good result if this can stop on the green. Needs to carry that front bunker as well. It just depends if he can get the club on the ball cleanly. Sounded like it was on a route. Carlos Ortiz for birdie at 10 to help Todd K just hang on to the coattails of Ripper to get to 28 under. And he manages it. And he is 10 under for the tournament, only three back of the individual lead. Richard Bland. This was an eagle putt for the cliques. Oh, right in the throat. That birdie will take them to 28 under three back of Ripper GC. Back out at nine, Henrik Stenson with his Majestics. Just two shots off the podium. He's looking, unfortunately, at his fourth shot. But while we wait, we'll go back. Shot here. 400. Shot here. 60, what, 90 yards to the tee for Abe Answer. Yeah, a big <laughs> tee shot for him now after the poor swing off the last one. Just needs to right the ship. Cool breeze into the face, moisture in the air. This hole cannot play any longer than it is right now. How's the body language, Dom? It's still okay, it's still uh, no emotion, no dropping of the head. Struggling. 
tightening of the shoulders. But this is right. This is going to leave him a long, long second. And, and if it hits the cart path, that could be in the penalty area. It could. No, it's, uh, it's OK, Dom. OK. Stenson trying to avoid making a double at nine. Oh. Beautiful shot. Such interesting technique. Amy Lorac closing the face on the lengthy bunker shot and letting it release. Now live with Cam. Doesn't have too much green to work with, but this is not an overly complicated bunker shot. Got a fan that club face wide open. The sand is a little wet from that bit of drizzle that we've had in the last couple of holes. Not going to be happy with that one. Well, go you good things. The Aussies, the Ripper GC, had a four shot lead momentarily, though. That was Mark Leishman for his uh, birdie at 15. But Waco Neiman reduced the arrears seconds later with uh, that birdie at 14. So Waco is five under for his round today. Torquay are eight under. They trail Ripper GC by three. And don't look now. Waco is three back of his third win in four weeks if he can pull this one off. Jake Spann, this could quickly become the best finish of the season without question. And we've had one finish in pitch darkness. Mm. Yeah, that, hard to imagine anything gets better than that. Now for par, Sue Ann, this is John Rahm. Oh, this is for Birdie. Oh, excuse me, Birdie. For John. This is to get him closer to the top of that lead. Would you be surprised if I told you a guy like John Rahm meditates? was quite open about that after he won the Masters. Now this will put some pressure on Abe. Go. 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 Kind of a microcosm of his day so far. Sebastian Munoz for birdie at 11 of Torquay GC. No, it doesn't look like a miss hit. Cam at nine, just trying to figure out the line on this one for par. He's made quite a few clutch up and downs today. That sand was just a little more damp than he thought it was. It's been decently quick from back there. Just two back. The Fireballs not having a great day. They had a three stroke lead coming into Championship Sunday here in Hong Kong. They're three over par as a collective so far. That was uh, Sergio Garcia, their captain, his second shot into 16. Sergio is one under today. He's the only Fireball under par so far. Danny Lee of the Ironheads, he's four under overall. Yeah! was an excellent birdie putt at the first. Now Henrik Stenson for bogey. It'll be a blow for him and for the Majestic. Daniel. Don't 
don't want to make a big number, especially this time on a Sunday. Dom told me earlier this week, this place can do that to you. You either make a birdie or you can make a double or a triple if you make some bad swings. That's a great up and down. Difficult bunker shot he had. Just a moment to go in, Poulter. Now back to answer his second. 210 yards to the front edge of the green and the pin is back. Four hybrid, but he's got a clear shot. Pretty good lie. Needs a good golf swing. Something to build on. Not going to carry the bunker. Oh, well, that's, that's the, the shot bunker. that we've just seen Henrik Stenson have. In South Africa, many golfers think that Louis Oosthuizen is the goat, as Suan Heng found out this week. That moniker has more than one meaning. Welcome to Hang Time. This week we're here at the historic Hong Kong Golf Club and I've got Louis Oosthuizen, the captain of Stinger GC. We're here at the 6th, we're going to watch him play it and we're going to have a chat. Let's do this. I was in Miami and I think I spoke to your wife and she said, you guys recently added some new animals to your farm, the fainting goats. <laughs> yeah, the range the, goats. The range yeah. goats. Call them the range goats. And you named them after all the range well, goats. I still... Now you have to rename them, by the yeah, way. No, they Bubba, Taylor, Thomas, and Harold. And, uh, Harold. <laughs> yeah. and I heard... Bubba passes out the whole time. I was going to say, yeah. who passes out the most? Uh, Bubba, you, like, you just go past him and sometimes when you go with a buggy past him and, and you accelerate, then it goes like a <laughs> big, and he just goes and he just falls over. <laughs> So yeah, Baba is a fainter. I still Did you take wanna, a video for him? No, I still want to do a, because I've got a range coach flag, so I want to put it up there. Yeah. And then I want to do a video for them, but then they all swapped. I'm like, oh man, I can't change the names now. But yeah, that's a, so it's, a, it's, it's fun. It's like very, very, a lot of fun to go to. Cam Smith has reached the tee at 10. Three iron. He put this in his bag this week, took it as seven wood. To get more options off the tee. Yeah, yes. It's Matt Jones with his second at the 11th. He wants it to go right. Not bad. Tier 10, it's John. By the way, if you haven't seen Fainting Goats, you need to go and check it out. It's so funny. Where do you go to do that? YouTube. Oh, or the Google, as you call the it. The Google. Fainting Goats is a neighborhood in the villages just outside Ocala. Retirement community, Arlo. Active. It's not animal abuse, by the way. They naturally faint. I'd prefer to fly to South Africa and see it in person. Mm -hmm. Carlos Ortiz in stereo. The second shot at 11. And we're going to see more spin now. These greens are a little greasy on top with this moisture. Well, golf fans all over the world are downloading the Live Golf Plus app, and for very good reason. You can enjoy all the content the league has to offer. You can watch live and commercial free in selected markets. You can also rewatch every single round of Live Golf since day one, as well as feature content including Live Lessons, Hang Time, as you just saw with Louis Oosthuizen, and What the Fair Hitty. Download the app today. Abraham's third here. The lie is wonderful. Sitting up 
beautifully. It's not yeah. a difficult bunker shot. Yeah, he is not in as tough a spot as Henrik Stenson find himself. Just but with the, the, the wet surface, you just got to be careful that first bounce can skid. That's better. That'll settle a few nerves, I'm sure, for Abe Anser. Graham McDowell, he's within two of the lead. This was for Eagle. G-Mac, 11 under par, giving it a really good go on a golf course where he's had two top six finishes in the Hong Kong Open. Marty Keimer with his second shot at 16. Harold Barner out at nine. Hit a lovely second shot, towering long iron. Landed in the middle of the green, but the slope just took it to the right edge. So a good 45 feet here, leaving the pin in. That needs to break. The 11th green, Carlos Ortiz. Could have toppled in for the same price. Torque stayed three back of Ripper GC. Chikara long one here for par at nine. That's looking good. Hit it. There you go. Next, Abe answer then for par. Everything is still up for grabs in Hong Kong. We have nine to play on Championship Sunday. Well, it's going to be a thriller here on Championship Sunday in Hong Kong. What a golf course this is, the Hong Kong Golf Club. It's chilly, it's a little rainy, but the action is just compelling. Your announced team, myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foltz and David Ferti in the booth, Don Boulay and Su An Heng doing a sterling job out on the course for us. And as you can see, currently 61 Fahrenheit, 16 Celsius and intermittent showers expected today. Well, this is my spotting board for Live Golf uh, announcing, and it's an absolute mess. I've got no <laughs> chance of making any sense of this. Such is the uh, excitement and the action that is occurring at the moment. Remember Abe Anser, a 63 on Friday, 62 yesterday, bogey-free through his first 40 holes, but he's bogeyed both par threes, and that lead that was five is now just two over Graham McDowell and Cam Smith and their team competition. That's anyone's. At the moment, Ripper GC lead the way. So Cam Smith is chasing a double individually and in the team. And Suan Heng, you are following him today. Indeed, uh, Arlo. Cam has been ice cold on the greens as he's always been. He's so good with that putter. He's two under par. He's chasing that lead uh, for Enzo. And in that process, he's also helping Ripper, who is currently in the lead, which is what 
we all hope for to watch. Uh, but Ram, on that note, has been really good from tee to green. He's been missing some putts, but if he can step on the gas in the back nine, he can certainly make his way up that leaderboard as well. What a difference a day mate makes. Yesterday, Abraham Anser hit every green in regulation. Today, he's hit two greens in the first nine holes. His swing is definitely out of sync. But he did play the back nine in five under par yesterday, so he's got to take a positive from that. And that bunker shot there on the ninth hole, hopefully, hopefully, he got something out of that. Cam Smith, some of his highlights, captain of Ripper GC. This, the eagle putt at number three. Cam Smith starting out at number one today. He would two putt that for birdie. Second shot into the sixth here. Holds his finish nicely. He would knock that one in. And Sue Ann, you said right at the start of the show that it's going to play a little trickier out there today. The weather conditions are quite similar to yesterday, albeit with a little bit of mist in the air. What is making this course so difficult for these legendary players to score on? Uh, well, I think it is a little bit cooler than it was yesterday, not by much, and it certainly is a little wetter as well. I think today the whole locations are making this golf course really tough, especially you saw the one on the ninth being tucked on that left side. It really puts the pressure off the tee, and I think you'll see that moving forward in the back nine as well. Sir, so, are you seeing some dampness on the greens there that's causing a little more spin, and is that going to affect these guys with the false fronts and the drop-offs that are around these flag sticks? Absolutely. I think you see a lot of players not really going for these pins because it is a little wetter, as you said, David. And also, you've got to be careful. Sometimes if you hit it down green, you can get those skits uh, that would just jump the, the ball forward. So, yeah, you've got to really play quite smart in these wetter conditions. Well, the game seemed to come very easy through two rounds to yeah. Aver, for Abraham answer. This not so much the case today at three for birdie. Oh, no. You know, and I have the feeling that if that had dropped, it, this may have been so different the situation he finds himself in. That's his second shot. Yeah, he, he caught too much of the ball there on that bunker shot. And then at the eighth, that was an impossible shot. Dom yeah. knows it very well. He's been there thousands of times with Abraham answer. Uh, unfortunately, that led to another bogey. Dom. What's the difference that you see in Abraham's game today as opposed to yesterday? Well, I can't see inside his mind, but it has to be a little bit of nerves, but he's definitely out of sync with his swing, Jerry. And he's got a two-way miss. The par three yeah. fifth hole, he went in the left bunker. The par three eighth hole, he went in the, in the right bunker. And uh, he's hit a lot of, couple of quick hooks. That tee shot on seven, it only carried 180 yards. It was turning over so quickly so you know like I said he's got to take a positive from yesterday's back nine five under par was magnificent maybe maybe he can repeat that yeah we, we saw that low hook off the seventh and then we saw the push off the ninth those are two shots that go together Dom you know uh, how does he get that you know he needs to find one in the middle yeah, I, I mean, David, it, he looks a little quicker from the top, and certainly, you know, he's got a lot of slide in his lower body. I think it's maybe he's not really competing as, uh, completing his backswing, and then he slides, and the club drops on the inside, and you're absolutely uh, correct. That would create a two-way miss. If your club face is open, it's going to go right. If you turn your hands over, it's going to snap to the left. Ripper GC in the team competition have been fantastic so far today. They trailed the Fireballs by three coming into Championship Sunday. The Fireballs have slumped and Ripper have taken advantage. They currently have a three-stroke lead. Lucas Herbert second into 17, followed by Cam Smith. That was a birdie putt at six. Matt Jones has had a terrific week. This for birdie at eight. At one stage, not so long ago, we had a four-way tie for first place, but Ripper have had a nice little run. But now live, for it to get even better, Cam Smith for birdie at 10, and to get to within one of Abe Anser. Oh! Boy, oh boy. He can barely believe it. Well, you can see John Rahm on 11 under because he made that at 10. 
and there's a terrific raucous atmosphere around the 10th green as well boy it's hard to know where to start i think we've covered off abraham answer we're going to be looking very very closely at him to see if he can see seal this deal albeit not playing anywhere near as well as he did on the opening uh, two days but cam smith if you look if you're yeah. Abe answer looking in the rear view mirror and you see cam smith playing like he's playing at the moment for his team and individually you're going to be worried, aren't you, David? Yeah, for sure. Cam Smith, you've got the usual suspects, Cam Smith, John Ram, but you've got people up there like Graham McDowell yeah. now and Dickie B. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's really going to be a very interesting nine holes. You know, uh, Abraham answered, said he was going to try and convince himself that he wasn't leading going into mm. today. It's to get to the point now, if he doesn't turn it around quickly, he won't be leading. Then you find out what you're really made of when, when you're when your back's up against the wall, when you had that lead, it dissipates. We saw it with Taylor Gooch last year in Adelaide. That will tell us how much deep down inside he is in control of his game. Right now, it's a little sporadic, but we'll see. You got some, you got some big hitters chasing you. Absolutely. Well, as Don mentioned, the back nine has been kind to Aban. So a streak of five birdies Friday, four birdies yesterday. How about Broncos outside? Cam Smith, John Rahm, and now Waco Neiman chasing down Answer. Exciting finish coming. Yes, it certainly is. And the team competition as well. We have seen Ripper just establish a three-stroke lead, but it can all change with four scores counting so quickly. We're about to find out if a team playoff is a myth or if it can actually happen. <laughs> it could be more than two teams, and we could have an individual and team playoff. That remains to be seen. But this is Graham McDowell now to get it to within one of Abraham answer. A revitalized Graham McDowell who says he feels like he's playing for a, with more purpose this year since Brooks Kepka signed him to smash GC. G Max still four under par today. Right, Win probability for the team as of right now, and that is going to be very volatile come down the stretch. 60%. That's based on the holes remaining stroke average today and the players playing them and how they've done this week. Based on last week, Jerry, my money's on the Majestics. <laughs> <laughs> it was about this time, wasn't it? It was the just, just a little earlier. Yeah. Uh, seven and a half, eight holes in, they had less than a 1% chance. And they won it by four. That's a better swing there from Abe Anser and a great chance for birdie. Whilst that was happening, John Rahm on the tee at 11. Now live, Cam on the tee at 11 with the driver. Yeah, I spoke to Grant and he said they've been working on trying to get his weight more to his right. He started to get too stacked. Again, he finds that longer grass. Mito Pereira on the tee at five. Okay, just four back. And don't forget Carlos Ortiz. He has this for birdie at the 12th. Um, just a maybe a six inches or a foot slower the greens are now. Chris Herbert is getting a lot of action on our coverage today because he's playing very well for Ripper GC. That's a narrow miss right, but should be a par. <laughs> Henrik Stenson, Majestics for birdie at 10 after the great save for Bogey at nine. Gorgeous putt there. And how about it, David? How about what Anthony Kim's doing today? Yeah, this is special. That for Start. birdie at six. Starting to hit great shots, make great putts. Anthony Kim, two, three under par on his round today. That was 
Karras, third out of ten. Not pretty. Dustin Johnson over at the fourth for birdie. Well, it's too little, too late for Dustin, but a nice round he's got going today. Matt Jones at the twelfth. Huge putt here for Avancer. This would do so much for his confidence if he were to knock this in. And definitely walking a little slower. He's already quite a slow walker. Well, that's Doesn't good, Dom. You know, no. just take his time. Yeah, make sure he concentrate on your breathing. I'm sure his caddy Benji Thompson. He's been in, in big moments. He's the right man on the bag for these moments. Now, as you say, this is massive. Yeah, Benji won't get stressed or panic. It's all a matter of what's going on in Abraham's head right now. There it is. Abe strikes back. He stops the rot. His first birdie of the day. He's back to 14 under and he's re-established a three-stroke lead. Oh, Jonesy. This is one at 12 and that's Ripper of drop one. Henrik Sensen at 11. Come on. Come on. Reminder about Friday, the opening day here, where Aban Sakai had a seven under par 63. He had a run of five straight birdies between nine and 13. He's in that sweet spot on the course now. Saturday, a run of four straight birdies between 11 and 14. And he also birdied five of the last eight yesterday. It's a pitching wedge for right. camp. Torquay have got themselves into a tie for second place with the cleats. That's Mito Pereira at five. He's one under for his round. Torquay at eight under par. They still trail though. Ripper GC by two. John, he's got nine iron. He's gonna try and punch one in here. As we talked about earlier, it's a little wet. Ball's not traveling as far. In the hole! This is 16. Joaquin Neiman drives that one in low. Looking for a couple of hops and a check. Beautifully done. Coming off that bogey five at 15, which has just halted his progress Sorry. somewhat. Should be mainly off the right, yeah. Yeah. If he goes on to get this done today, right, quiet, please. that birdie at 10 is just going to be yeah. monumental. Yeah. That could be pivotal for him. As well as this swing, if he can put a good swing on this, now I find the fairway. 
He's been immersed in the game of golf since he was a toddler. His father, Abraham Senior, would take him to the, the golf course. He would play 18, then take little Abe out for nine holes. Then Pops would uh, pop up to the locker room, play a bit of cards with the boys, and Abe would be out chipping and putting with the, the other kids until long after the sun had set. Oh, that's well done there. Finds the right edge of the fairway. Now, in a global sports league like Live Golf, jet lag comes with the territory. In this week's WTF, David Fairty explains just how troublesome it can be. Hello, Fairty here, and this week I come to you from the future or the past. I don't know. For the last six weeks, I've been in Mexico, Las Vegas, Belfast, Jeddah, and now Hong Kong. And frankly, right now, I don't know if I'm blown up or stuffed. After 50 years of chasing my own wristwatch around the globe, I finally figured out what it is that causes jet lag. It's the damn jets. Everyone is in such a hurry to be somewhere else, they leave time and often their luggage behind them. You've never heard of boat lag, I bet, or train lag, or donkey lag, I bet. I'm a great believer in the better life through chemistry. So a strategic sleeping pill, Ambien, or as I like to call it, the velvet sledgehammer, is a prerequisite. That stuff would put sea biscuit to sleep. Imagine having to roll out of bed with your body and mind wrecked and having to go out and perform a physically precise job that demands perfection at the highest level imaginable against a bunch of ruthless competitors who deep down want to see you fail. At the end of the day, jet lag is kind of like divorce, except it doesn't even seem like a good idea at the time. It's painful, infuriating, expensive, and at the end of it, even when it's over, you feel like you lost half the time to someone that you didn't even know. <laughs> I might inquire about the velvet sledgehammer. If I wake up at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. It's Cam. Yeah. Birdie at 11. That was a moment ago. Yeah, and these greens have definitely slowed up at, uh, just a touch. And David, I think Cam caught that one a little fat. It sounded that way anyway. As I said in the halftime show, John's been hitting some great shots. I don't think he was very happy with this one, but at least it's uphill. Going to be difficult to judge that first five, six feet with the wet fringe. It's into the grain. This will move to his left. Boy, that got caught up in the in the grain going up the slope there and that is wow that was horrible martin keimer captain of the cliques birdie at 17 not to be they stay two back the former clique graham mcdowell three back of answer left it a little right and if that's on the upslope, we may have a chance, but it's short-sided. Tell you what, I got to watch him the last couple of days, and he hasn't been as sharp around the greens. Just goes to show how well he's actually striking the golf ball. It's so pure. Adam Hayes spoke to me earlier and he said, you know, I don't, he said, I don't think John is playing his best golf at the moment. And yet he's still contending every week in the last three weeks. He said he's really trying to just get into the role that he has out here. It's not about him anymore. He has to be a captain. He has to play golf. He has to travel a little farther. Oh, it's a great save after a ghastly first attempt. To the green at 16. The Waco for birdie, which would get Todd Kay within one. And uh, Waco has just cooled off over the past couple of holes. The man who 
has won two of our opening three events. Leishman to extend the lead for Ripper GC. It remains at two. Cam now for Park. And left to right putt downhill. Still in contention, and Ripper still with a two-stroke lead. Adrian Moronk to get the cliques one closer to halve the deficit. This at 13. The reigning DP World Tour Player of the Year is 10 under par. The cliques are 30 under, and they trail yeah, Ripper by just one. It's a little bit thick. 60. 60. Back home playing like a 63 shot. I like, I like that. That's good. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Good visual here. See it and do it. That was an excellent swing on that tee shot. And he's got an eight iron. And this is a pretty friendly pin right at the front of the green. There's a little more of an air of freedom about it. Just his body language right now. The look in the eyes. Well spotted, Jerry. Oh, this, is, this might make, hit the bunker. Oh my goodness. It sounded like it came off the heel as well. Paul Casey, second at 10 over Boulay's burn. There's that spin. Beautiful. John on the tee at 12, playing 141. Today's whole location is on the left side of the spine that splits the screen into two parts. It is a tricky hole location. You want to be on the left side today. He's got nine iron when coming across from the right. Oh. That's beautifully judged. This is just incredible. The cliques are now into the lead. Kale Samoya from Finland, he was promoted to the Live Golf League at our promotions event in Abu Dhabi in November. The golden ticket off the tee at two. It's the oh. second ace of the day. Kale Samoya is all smiles. The cliques are 32 under par. And they lead Ripper on this day of days in Hong Kong by a single shot. Why not another one right here, Sue Ann? Yeah, wedge for Stenton. He flights the ball way up. I don't think he caught all of that. Oh. Kelly Samuya here. You think we can get 130 out of this right now in these conditions? Early. Heavy air off the right? No. You don't? No. Okay. Early in round one, just knocked the flag out of the hole. That one. Literally What's the swing that one, Doc? That's it? The cliques have never won a team competition in that. live golf history. Okay. Abe Ansett's never won an individual Perfect. title. To that. Those are our leaders. Love change for Cam. Went from a pitching wedge to a nine iron. Saw what it did to Stenson's ball. Let's get you to Abe Ansa's third shot at 11. Half the distance of the one he had on nine, but the line not as good. It's well played nonetheless. He doesn't need to keep leaving himself this stuff. 
Lucas Herbert to save par at nine to keep Ripper GC one back. Boy, it's all changed since the halfway mark on Championship Sunday. Or has it? That is absolutely magnificent from Lucas Herbert. Ripper, one back of the cliques. Richard Bland. That's a 16. And stone dead for Dickie B. Well, G Mac had got it to 11 under par, and this is to save par at 15. No problem at all. We've had uh, just the two aces today. Aces five and six in live golf history. Waco Neiman, this was at eight. A man who's already won twice in the live golf league this season. One of the greatest players on the planet right now. And then Calais Samoya, who won the golfing lottery by getting promoted into the live golf league for this season. That was a two, and that got the cliques who are chasing their first ever team victory into the lead. Over on the 12th green. Richard Bland did tap in for the cliques for his birdie, but Sue Ann Stenson on the front of the green here. Yeah. Yeah, David, and the raindrops are coming down a little bit harder. This is not going to be an easy putt for Stenson. I was walking alongside him, coming off the screen, and he said, I think he just came up a little softer than he wanted to off the tee. Going with the left hand low for this lag putt. Green at 11 and a bouncer for par. You feel this part is almost as big as the one on the last green. They're yep. all, all big from here on in, I feel. He stays three clear. His fireballs, though, who are three ahead coming into the final day, are nine off the pace. on the 12th green. Oh, there is a leaderboard. There is a leaderboard just next to the screen, not too far. Fairly big one. I don't think I've seen him take a look at it yet. Team competition getting a little more stretched out now at the very top of the pylon. Five teams separated by seven shots. The Majestics are one of those teams on 26 under, seeking a podium. They're three behind Torquay at the moment. Ian Poulter, no stranger to this course, winner of the Hong Kong Open in 2010. That was his third shot at 13. Poulter is one under today. Majestics are six, six under today. Dean Burmester. Terrific opening round of 63 to tie the lead. It hasn't gone his way since. That was for birdie at 12. Joaquin Neiman at 17. Stay there. Good shot. John Rahm for birdie at 12. 
I've noticed in the last few holes, you can just tell the extra focus in his eyes. Got this on the live line, moving right seven inches. Just a fraction slower than they were an hour or so ago, these greens, and they're not quite picking up on it. Matt Jones, this for birdie at 13. Well, everyone, Live Golf Fantasy is back with an exciting format that offers multiple ways to win. Pick your team, then compete against friends, foes, and family around the world. Watch your team climb the pylon and win great prizes, and more importantly, of course, bragging rights. It's fantasy, but louder. It's another great way to enjoy the Live Golf League. Hey, Vance's next three, Jerry. We got some scoring opportunities on the back. 12th playing under par, still a cautionary hole. The other two definite birdie holes, including especially the par five, number 13. They also present an opportunity for those nearest him to mount a charge. And and Rob and Smith as well. 36 playing 40 to 42. Yeah. It's just all kind of a field shot you want to hit. Trap draw, hard way. Like I said, I actually don't mind putting from just past that hole. I'm thinking we kind of hit a kind of a holdy nine with it. Kind of like similar to the way we were trying to do yesterday. Because, I mean, it's thick right now. You know what I mean? And the breeze is, should be from like 2 o'clock-ish. These trees are getting a little bit. Well, so we'll call it landing 36. Like 42 with this. Okay. Coming down just a touch right of it? Yeah. Okay. So a little nine will not spin as much as a hard wedge. This could be a good idea. Well done. John on the tee at 13th. Par five. Just been waiting for the crowd to make way for his tee shot. It's the easiest hole in the golf course. He's thinking birdie or eagle. Has to find the fairway here. Everything slopes right to left. Oh, water. No way. This is hit. Stay in bounds. Way right. that was that. Stay in bounds? That was dead center of the face. Actually, I think it's okay. It's just on the grass there, right in the bunker. It was a little dramatic. Hey, he's looking at it like he might have a cracked face on that driver. Martin Keimer with a birdie putt at 18. He'll be well aware of the team situation. Captain of the cliques. A par there would maintain a two-stroke lead. Carlos Ortiz for birdie at 13. That helps Dorque. He's also now three back. Kaima made that par for the cliques at 18. Adrian Moronk. That's his third at 14. Well played. Cam is on the tee at 13. We've had 13 individual winners in Live Golf in our 23 regular season events. Avanta would be number 14. In the team competition, there were 12 teams. There are now 13. Legion 13 was their first competition as an expansion team in Mexico. The cliques are one of four alongside the Ironheads, the High Flies, and the Majestics yet to win a team title. You can tell from that practice swing by Cam, he's really trying to get that weight to his right. Not 
to the reverse seat and get him a little stuck. And this is headed left. Abans are just holding firm at the moment and the cliques creating history potentially in Hong Kong. Chikara on the 12th tee. Chikara is a fireball. Oh, this has a chance. No. Walco Neiman's having a superb day. He's had a few of those lately as well. This is to tie his Torquay team for second place. For birdie at 17, 31 under par for Torquay. But Sebastian Munoz has just bogeyed 40. Graham McDowell second at 16. Torquay back to solo third. Tyrrell Hatton, his second shot at 16, just to give you an idea of the volatility on Championship Sunday with four scores counting. The Fireballs today, who were leaders overnight by three, are three over par. The Cliques, who were just on the fringes of the podium, they're 11 under, so a 14-shot swing. The Cliques in the lead by two. Speaking of volatility, there's reports coming in from folks on the course through Twitter that Tyrrell Hatton's putting with his wedge. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, here's Bubba. Staring at it. Second at 17. Chikara tapping in for birdie after that magnificent tee shot at 15. We're rolling in relation to this little spot right there. Might want to tap it a little bit. I was kind of over it. You're over that? Okay. Yeah, this is kind of like the apex right there. On the right. Okay. Okay. Stand up this for a second. Yeah, once it kind of runs rise a little bit downhill. Sea line, roll it down it. There's definitely some moisture on these greens now. This is the same putt John Rahm had, isn't it? Similar. Well, one pathway into the Live Golf League is the International Series, a series of 10 elevated events. The first was held a couple of weeks ago in Oman. It was dominated by Live players. Carlos Ortiz won it. Louis Oosthuizen came second. And Jerry, in order to do an Andy Ogle tree and win the standings and get promoted, you do have to take out victory first place in yes. the International Series. Yes. Playing next week in Macau will be Anthony Kim, who I know it's not the big story today, but it is and was the biggest story last week for all the people dying to see Anthony Kim play golf again after a 12-year hiatus. He's three under par today. The last time he shot in the 60s was 12 days shy of 12 years ago. First round at <laughs> Bay Hill. That is beyond remarkable his sixth round of competitive golf in a dozen years and he's been trending in the right direction 72 yesterday as well ak that's for birdie at 16 and he's proving today and this week quite a lot of doubters absolutely wrong that was birdie at 18 the swagger is coming back birdie at three 
And then a 4.30 at the day of the day at six. Third in putting this week. That doesn't happen when you've taken a week off, much less 12 years. Yeah, no kidding. Cam Smith, he got so lucky to not be behind any trees. He's got an um, open shot here. Oh, this is headed towards the left greenside bunker. Oh, it jumped out of the bunker. And it's on the down slope of the T, the next T. Lucas Herbert, this is a moment ago for birdie at 10. Ripper were three up not so long ago, and they stay two behind the cliques. Carlos Ortiz up the hill to the 14th green, his second shot. GMAC for birdie at 16. John, just getting relief here on the 13th. Let me, let me double check. That should be correct, bud. TV tower was in his way. With the whole location today on the right side of the screen, that TV tower just right up this fairway was in his line. That's what he's looking place. for. Actually, have 202. Yep. Okay. We'll try and get that place. Adrian Moronk is on the tee at 15. Two under for his round so far today. The cliques have surged into first place by two. Oh, you're kidding. Oh. Uh oh. Wow. The tributary to Boulay's burn. <laughs> Because I've been in all of them. <laughs> Dominique Creek, I'm I mean, calling it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> heavy air. Give me a number. Um, 90. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was a good break for John. Now he's got decent lie. Very good lie, actually. Six iron. Today's pin just tucked behind that front right bunker. Try and fade one into this whole location. He's thinking three. Oh, that was such a soft bounce. We haven't seen hardly any of those today. This is Hong Kong Golf Club. It's a wonderful venue, and this is 13. Yeah, 529 yards, the easiest hole in the golf course. Straight away, par five. Easily reachable for pretty much everyone in the field. Oh, well, where that flag is today, over on the right, John Ram has left it in a kind of an awkward position. It's a car on the tee. Eagle this hole on Friday. Same exact bounce he got on the other par five. Number three, favorable. Richard Bland for birdie at 17. Bland teed off at five. He's got one par five remaining. Which is the third hole. Kelly Samoya has one par five to play. He teed off at nine. Moron teed off at three. And Kaima teed off at seven. He has one par five to play. His Abraham Anser teeing off at 13. Certainly can't carry those two bunkers on either side of the fairway, so he's got to thread it. Yep. That's yeah, really these are, nice. These are better swings, Tom. They certainly are, David. Cam for his third downhill light. He's got a lot of green to work with, which is good news. It's been so good around the greens, as he always has. 
that weight forward in your stance. Shoulders following that slope. Very nice. Ho oh, ho, Adrian Moronk in the burn. Not a lot of water in there. It's not a shot you practice very often. How about that? Not bad at all. Tordekay has tied for second place on 31 under par. Two back of the cliques. Waco Neiman, an ace at the eighth hole uh, earlier on, of course, has helped that. But Carlos Ortiz has just made birdie. John Rahm having to chip it across there, plays it beautifully. Beg your pardon, Stenson. Joaquin Neiman at 18. He teed off at six. Wow. Now, at 13, Ram just a little farther to the left than Stenson was. Uh, he's got some right to left in this one. Yeah, David. Got a good read from. Stenson's putt. It is a lot slower with the moisture from the drizzle that we're getting. Yeah, and that just holds it up. Here's Lucas Herbert on 11. <laughs> now, if Moron can get this up and down to 15, that'll be quite a four after being in the in the burn. for birdie at 13 to get to within one of the cliques and to tie for second place two back of Adrian, uh, Abraham Anser. You want to birdie a par five. You want to think the guys behind would be making birdies here. It's the easiest hole right to left. Yes. Cam Smith fighting on two fronts here. In Hong Kong, Ripper into solo second, putting pressure on the cliques. They're only one back, the Aussies. And Smith on 12 under par, two back of Abraham Anser. It seems like John's not quite used to the speed since the drizzle. He's left a few of them short. Join the tie for second. He's still in it, John Rahm, seeking a first live golf title himself. After three top ten finishes, he joins Ortiz and Smith on 12 under par. McDowell, second into 17. 
picks that cleanly off that wet surface. Right at the flag. Stinson's a little putt here to clean up. A little more than a tap in here. Looking at the holes remaining, difficulty of those holes right now favors Ripper uh, by a little bit of a margin over Cleeks, but you got Torque right on the heels. Sebastian Munoz short sided here and will be short sided again. Let's have another go at that one, shall we? It's all one of these. This is 13, Calais Samoya, by the way. Hole in one at two, a six at the par five third. <laughs> we have a tie once again at the top of the team competition on 32 under, the Cleeks and Ripper. One ahead of Torn K. Needs to carry. Oh. Well, it's going all the way here on Championship Sunday in Hong Kong. Can Abe answer seal it? Who's going to win out of the cliques or Ripper or Torn K? Or the Majestics or the Crushers? The list goes on. John Rahm on the tee at 14. Yesterday he drove it a little too far right. Wants to keep this one on the fairway. Started it just left. Fading. Oh, no. That went straight right kick. Come on. Martin Keimer, the captain of Cleeks. GC for birdie at one. Paul Casey. And that's birdie at twelve. is making another surge. They're eight under today. They're tied for third now with Torque on 29 under. Drop shot again for the Cleeks. It just changes so quickly. The crushers will be top when the music stops. Crusher started the day seven back. They're lurking now. Just four back and it can change in one hole if Cam Smith on the tee at 14. As I said earlier before, he doesn't hit the lefts on the green. Uh, sorry, on the driving range. It's a situational shot. He cannot hit this one left today. Cam Smith teeing off at 14. And that is ideal position. No sooner had the Cleeks opened a two-shot advantage at the top than Ripper respond, and they go too clear. This is Lucas Herbert at 11. And he's three under for his round so far today. All four scores count. Ripper, 33 under. They lead the Cleeks by two. Oh, G-Mac. He gets it to 12 under par. Two back of Abe Anser. Well, the green at 13, and Abraham's come up short right, and he's got a kind of an oblique angle here to this flag. See the dark green stripe on the right edge of the green there. That's the downslope. Ah, it is indeed true. 
Hatton's putter is no longer fit for play, I assume. I think that would be a safe assumption. Yeah. It might be a Dominique Creek. Walco for birdie at 18, and that slips by. Tordekay stay level in third with the Crushers. Yeah, I mean, they're over there doing something here, right? Well, he would love to have been on that clean, like smooth doing. sand where he could get Same. even more spin on it. He's 100% out of bunkers this week. Would love to keep that intact right here. Good 35 yards. Just left it in the wrong spot. Well, the top eight teams in each team competition accrue points for the season long standings. Anthony Kim is not affiliated to a team. He is one of two wild cards in a 54 man field this season. This for birdie at 10. Uh, bogey at the difficult ninth. Two under on the round. But the podium in the team competition is where the money is. And Ripper at the moment, 33 under. The Cleeks are 31 under. And the next four teams, Torquay, the Crushers, the Majestics, and exactly. the Fireballs, are separated by just two. Yep. Dominant win probability at this point now for Crushers. That's the difficulty of the holes remaining and where those players on the team started, which holes they have remaining. It was favoring, favoring them uh, just a few moments ago. Let's put up the hill. Now we'll stay for Cal. What's the shot? What are we looking? Plant the number. Mm-hmm. 104 is the number, correct. We're going to be just like one, like one person that where the camera in is, just right of it. Yep. Love it. This is where Cam is so good from this range. I want to stay slightly the pole. Pole location's all the way back. Leaving it below the hole will give him an uphill putt. Going to spin beautifully. Yeah. Any, John. Tree, any tree trouble for Rom here? Yeah, he's got branches in his way. I'm sure he would have much preferred yesterday's tee shot, even though it was further right. He just had a clearer shot into this green. Maddening. I'll name that tune in one. Uh, Richard Bland, his second shot at 18. Not a bad shot out of Blandy right there from up above laying it way back off the tee under the hole at 18. Answer, long putt for birdie, all things considered on this par five, Dom. Certainly is, Jerry. It's pretty quick, straight downhill, down grain. Well, 
five to play now for Abe Anser. He leads a quartet of players by two. Martin Keimer for birdie at two, the captain of the cliques. His time at the top of the pylon was somewhat fleeting, but they are still challenging for a, what would be a first ever team victory. Tom's third shot at 14. Fortunate after hitting the tree that's all to get this close to the green. Yeah, that could have gone anywhere. The holes remaining for these final, well, I can't call them final two in a shotgun start, but the two groups of leaders that teed off one, only one playing over par is 18. This is really the only remaining hole that's considered a birdie hole, and he's really going to do some magic to say par. on the pylon making bogey following out of that tie for second. There's Kevin Na in a, in a tie for eighth. He dropped five shots in three holes yesterday. Yeah. Lucas Herbert for birdie at 12. Just to pad the Rippers lead a little. The Crushers are surging again the second straight Sunday they can't do it again surely but they've got it to 29 under the only trail Ripper GC by four Bryson's team are in third Rom for par now at 14 gentle right to left breaker Abe Anser has left the door ajar here today, but nobody has been able to kick it down as yet. Oh, they're really good rounds on the course for guys who were a lot farther back than those nearest pursuers. This would be a huge one right here. Wouldn't say it's a must make for his chances of winning individually, but it's a big, big putt. That has the speed. So Ripper lead by two, and you just start to look at the scoreboards and holes beginning to run out. It could change very quickly. That's Cam Smith for birdie at six. He is still in the hunt for the individual title. He's three under today. Ripper at eight under today. Not the low score of the day, but they're in second place as Championship Sunday teed off. That was uh, Matt Jones for birdie at eight. This is Mark Leishman, birdie at 15. Three of the Rippers are under par. Matt Jones is a level par. Uh, Lucas Herbert, his second shot into the 11. Herbert is three under par for his round so far today. So the Rippers lead the Cleeks by two. Graham McDowell on the 18th tee. Off the deck. Mm, and that... Yeah, maybe... There's a scoreboard between him and the hole there. We'll see. Henrik for birdie at 14. Can he get the Majestics to 29 under? Yes, he can. He was walking after that one. The last time the Majestics finished on the podium was 19 events ago. The fourth event in 2022 in Boston. Richard Bland. 
on the 18th green for birdie. He can't, can he? Oh! <laughs> that just runs out of steam. Now Cam at 40. This to get to within one and really, really turn the screw on Abe Ansem and to give Ripper a three-shot lead. opportunity for Cam. Back on the tee at 14 is Abraham Anser. I've never seen this situation in my, all my time in golf. Varna has already teed off 14, Anser's about to tee off, and Chakar has gone back to where he played his second shot to play his fourth after declaring the ball unplayable. On 13? Yes. Huh. You ever seen that before, Jerry? You had me at hello. I've seen it, but normally in public golf. <laughs> it's a beauty. Yeah, that's a good swing. So in essence, these guys are going to be waiting quite a while until they hit their next shots. You would think. Henrik on the tee at 15. The Majestic's tied for third. Just an iron for Henrik. It's 277 to the lake, whatever we're calling it. This is the Boulet Lake. Nice high draw. No wind here, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're target. Adrian Moronk, his third shot at 16. that far away from halving the deficit to the leaders ripper gc to a stroke this opportunity there for camp caught him staring at that leaderboard right before he putted he knows he needs to make those putts coming down the stretch here this is headed a little left but it might be okay Well, both titles in Hong Kong are still very much in the balance. Abe Anser leads by two, Ripper lead also by two. John Rahm with his five wood. He was not happy after he walked off the 14th green, as you would expect. Just a short par four and made a bogey. Don't want to be doing that at this point of the competition. It's uh, a solid drive. The Majestics often thrive when the weather gets a little bit gnarly. They are all four of them, Northern Europeans after all. And here, Poulter has rolled a birdie putt in at 16. And the Majestics, 30 under, they are in solo third. Anthony Kim at the 11th. Knocks in another one. Graham McDowell must have punched out to here. Well, Graham McDowell had to punch out of the trees on the right. This is his third shot into 18.
Well, Live Golf's first podcast, Fairway to Heaven, is hosted by Jerry Foltz and Sue Ann Heng. It's always a great watch, especially with recent guest Anna Van Lahiri. Do you think that that always playing as an underdog, that you're still facing that as now a representative of Live? It's reduced. Yeah. Jerry, if you asked me this question 18 months ago, it would be an overwhelming yes. Yeah. But it's always there. I think winning a Live event is super hard because you just look at all the guys you got to beat. Right. Right. It's it's not a joke. If you do win, the people who don't understand what it takes to win will yeah. think it's a joke. Yeah. And that is what is really disappointing. I like to keep my head down, focus on my golf. I'm still working as hard, if not harder than I did mm -hmm. on my game. I still want to go out and win tournaments. I want to beat these guys. I want to prove to myself that I can beat all of these guys. To answer your question, yes. Yeah. I think to some extent, it's it's sad. And, and I, I think we all live and die with each other. There's a common bond. There's yeah, a fraternity. I think over the next few years, that number of people who do 180s is just going to increase. Yeah. There's no question. Right? Yeah. I always enjoy listening to the thoughtful answers of Anaban Lahiri. You've spoken to Tyrrell Hatton, Jerry, since then. Here is Anaban Lahiri on the tee at five. Level par today. The Crushers are eight under for Championship Sunday, looking to go back to back after that remarkable come from behind victory in Jeddah last weekend when they went 20 under on the final day. They are currently two back of the tie for second. Cam at 15, Sue Ann. Right. I love that target. Yeah. Yep. I'm very happy with it. I love it. Commit to it, man. Cross that, that target. target. Nothing still on the path there, please. Thank you. My guess is that target is that TV tower left of today's whole location, which is back right. It's got a good angle on this left side of the fairway. Great graphic up here as Cam's play in this. Remaining holes for each team and what their score to par is likely to be. Crushers have it tough. And good Ripper shot. has a huge advantage there. The Majestics are 32 under par. This is a few moments ago. Sam Hallsfield is four under for his round. They are only one back of Ripper GC because Lee Westwood has joined the party. This for birdie at 10. Don't tell me it's going to be a, a Great Britain versus Australia end to the day here in the team competition with apologies to Sweden's Henrik Stenson. <laughs> Majestics are 12 under par today. That is the low score in the entire field by three shots. The cliques are nine under today. Answer up the hill at 14. Needs to go. Oh, what a good kick. Yeah, there's the spin, though. John Rahm at 15. Now oh, he got so lucky not landing in that divot. Eight iron for John. Oh no. Wow. Oh, he's pulled that. A moment to go, Anthony Kim on the tee at 12. Two over par 72 yesterday. He's three under par for his round so far today and a chance to improve matters. Live Golf League merchandise, everybody is flying off the shelves. Get yours at any Live Golf event by visiting the merch tent. Who knows, you might even run into a two-time champion golfer of the year, Greg Norman. Or you can do your shopping with the click of a button at shop.livegolf.com, the Live Golf online store. Grab a Legion 13 cap, Fireballs quarter zip, Majestic's t-shirt. Four aces polo, 13 teams, we've got 54 players, all the gear to make you the envy of your weekend foursome. That was Greg just earlier today. Graham McDowell across the 18th green for par. 
So the Osterman will drop one there. Second at 17 for Ian Poulter, one of the three Majestics captains who have surged up the pylon into solo second place, a shot behind the Aussie Rippers. You can sense the competitive juices flowing with Ian Poulter with a team title on the line. Thank you, Hong Kong, says uh, Greg. A pleasure meeting so many fans of all ages, and it's been packed and loud out there today, despite the slightly chilly and rainy conditions. Bryson at 13 for Eagle. And as you can see, bottom left of your screen, that would get the Crushers into a tie for third place with the Cliques. from Bryson DeChambeau on Championship Sunday and they're not out of it. They could go back to back the Crushers. They're two back of Ripper GC. Green at 12, Anthony Kim for birdie to get it to four under on the round. He's got the two easiest holes on the course today still remaining. Yes. Yay! Boy, does he look good with a putter. <laughs> oh, my, I can't believe what I'm seeing. He was tied third in putting coming into today. Yeah. That might have improved. This is Phil for birdie at 12. Yes. Yeah. That was just before AK putted. Answer at 14. Up the hill, left to right. Can he get it to the hole? Over at 15, John Rahm. So much further away than he wanted. Hard to get at this flag, though. Just a moment ago, Matt Jones for birdie at 16. For Ripper GC, level par today. Just veered away the very last, so the lead is still one. The Majestics are 32 under, and now the Crushers are 32 under par. Henrik Stenson for the Majestics to get level with Ripper GC and to close the gap on Abraham Anser to just one. Tell you what, with what's going on, he seems awfully relaxed out here and waving to fans, chatting between shots. Now this is the part of his game that has improved so much this week. Put that new putter in. You saw the Crushers get to 32 under par, one back of the leaders. This was Paul Casey for birdie at 13, and he gets himself to 12 under par as well. Carlos Ortiz for Torquay, they have slumped a tad to five off the lead, but he is 12 under as well, Carlos Ortiz, four under for his round. That was his birdie at 16. Camp for birdie here in 15. It's a right to left uphill putt. If you want a putting lesson, you can go on live lessons. He did a master class. Some really good tips in there. If you watch his putting stroke, there's more of a U plane. Instead of a straight, straight back, straight through. You can see he's trying to square his shoulders up just at the very last minute. Such tiny margins. A bouncer. 
15th tee. That, that needs to sit easy. down. Oh, you're kidding. That's the one place he couldn't hit it. The green at 17 and Ian Poulter for birdie. To tie the Majestics in the lead with Ripper GC. He has this annoying knack of making putts of this length when they really matter for a team. The mailman from seven rider cuts. Has it got enough? No. Well, the Live Golf Plus app is filled with great content, including an incredible and informative series of lessons from the best players in the world. Hey guys, this is Cam Smith. Hi, I'm Bryson DeChambeau. I'm Bubba Watson. And welcome, welcome, welcome to my Live Lesson. So if you're like me and you miss fairways, this is when the creativity comes out. Focus on that target. That's what I'm focused on. Pay the man. For me, I just want to make it simple as possible. Tempo for sure is one thing you need to keep an eye on. Cam Smith, he has taken complete control here. I like to aim the putter, make sure that's perfect. Then I take my stance, give it one good look at the hole, and hit a good putt. Houdini with the flat stick. Need a golf ball. Here we go. Bryson DeChambeau electrifies the crowd. So guys, there's a lot of mysteries around hitting it really far. That's what psycho mode comes in. Try to get a little psycho with it. Yeah, there it is. That was peppered. Let your body free up. Let things just move more. Don't feel like you're restricted. You can do that. You're on your way to better golf. It's uh, good stuff on the Live Golf Plus app. Let's go to the tee at two and Wako Neiman. Wako teed off at six. Four under par for his round, and Tordke are not out of it yet. They're only four back of the leaders, Ripper GC, but down in fifth place at the moment. Lee Westwood, first shot at 11, every shot, absolutely vital for these teams. All four scores count. Westy is three under par today, Stenson three under, Horsfield four under, and Poulter two under. a real tester for Westwood to say par. Let's take a look at the 16th hole, David. Yeah. 16 around the corner, slightly to the right, 411 yards, and the fairway cambers from right to left. So it ideally, you want to fade off the tee to hold it on the fairway. And this green sits kind of 45 degrees diagonally to the players. Uh, now well, there is Answer's ball at 15. Mark Leachman has just birdied three. Ripper lead by two. We saw Maroc play it out of this very creek, similar position. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. think he could play it. He's got a backswing. He's far enough back from the from the stone wall to get it up in the air. He just has to perhaps hood his club face a little bit swing from the inside. He wants to hook it. Meanwhile, at the 17th fairway, here's Matt Jones. He teed off at two. Bryson coming off eagle. He's three under par today. The Crushers tied for second with the Majestics, two back of Ripper. It's second to 14. Whoa! A 
potentially huge moment for the Majestics. Sam Horsfield for birdie at six. to go at 17, here's uh, Carlos Ortiz. Shot there, he's not sure where it is. You can't see the bottom of the flagstick. 16 and Cam Smith needs to hit the little fade off here if he can. Obviously not aware that answer behind him is in trouble. As you can see, left there is big time bad. Right's not terrible. Fairway's awesome. Oh, it looks pretty good up the right hand side. Kicked on a little to the left. That's perfect. Over at 15, Abraham has decided to take a penalty drop here. And he's keeping the point where the ball entered across the line between him and the hole. Yeah, I like that. Where did Moronk's ball finish? He was a little more toward the center of it, so he didn't have to hood the club. I mean, as we watch Waco for Birdia too. Uh, Morocco wasn't in jeopardy of losing the tournament with one swing like Abe yeah. Answer is right there. Yeah. Lucas Herbert, his third at the par 5 13th. That is an excellent birdie opportunity for the Rippers. This is Westwood for par at 11 for the Majestics, and they drop one at a vital time and slip to 31 under three back of the Aussies. The I'm not doing anything. Okay. All right, come on, hit me a shot. Answer playing his third. Seven iron. Oh, it's left center of the green. Yeah, the reason he didn't play it out, he could have got it out of that hazard, but it would have left him over on the right side of the fairway, which is no good for that flag. Rain sounds like, looks like it's getting a little heavier out there. Bryson coming off an eagle has a put for birdie at 14. Paul Casey, his teammate for the Crushers, is in this group as well. Casey five under today. DeChambeau three under. A week removed from a collective 20 under par that saw them come from 11 shots back going into Championship Sunday to win it by four. Green at 13, Lucas Herbert, you saw his approach shot, this for a birdie four. And it's a three shot lead once again for Ripper GC. Will they hold off all challengers here in the rain in Hong Kong? Lee Westwood has bogeyed. The Majestics dropped to 31 under. Ripper GC have stretched a lead to three after Lucas Herbert's birdie at 13. And now Bryson DeChambeau for the Crushers, who has just eagled 13. This for birdie at 14 and to close the gap to two again. Joint best performers on the final day after that 
sensational come from behind victory in Jeddah last week when they went 20 under par to pick the Stingers by four. Bryson. Predictably brilliant on Championship Sunday. He's 11 under individually, but look at the crushers. Are they about to pull off the virtual impossible again? They trail by two. Collectively, they just believe. Jones misses his birdie. Putt at 17. And just Ripper holding on to that tenuous two-stroke lead. Well, Abraham Answer as the rain teams down here has this from distance for par. handle that but that'll put four players within one shot of the lead DJ for birdie at 10 they threatened for a while the four aces to get on the podium but DJ has been magnificent today he's seven under par for his round so far the four aces are in eighth after a beautiful second shot Ortiz at 17 just misses. At 16, here's John Rahm. Stay for Cam Smith. Remember, Answer has a put for bogey. will be tied. Answer now to drop just one. Well done. A third bogey of the day though for Abraham Answer. A lead that was five shots at the start of play is now just one. This is the green at six, and Barn for par to keep the crushers two back. Jason Kokrak is on the 12th green. Seven over par for his competition. He was in contention in Jeddah in the oh. Championship Sunday last week. Back to 16 and John Rahm. Well, he's got it on the upslope here, and, but he's got a fair amount of upslope in front of him as well, so he's got to hit, just hit this neatly, get a little spin on it. Oh, it flew just a touch too far.
Lee Westwood for a bounce back birdie at 12 to get the Majestics back in the hunt. And he drains it. The Majestics 32 under. They trail by three. This is 16 green. Henrik Stenson for birdie. The Majestics have just gained a shot. Lee Westwood's birdie. Bounce back birdie. He's got them to 32 under par. I just don't know how this can be any more exciting. <laughs> what, what more yeah. entertainment can these guys provide? You know, the rain is coming down. It's such a dramatic scene out there. And in the closing stages, both titles are up for grabs. And, and Abe Anso, who had a five-shot lead, has now seen that whittle down to one. Yeah, and we always seem to do this on a Sunday. You know, we saw in Adelaide last year, Taylor Gooch with a 10-shot lead, you know, was jumpier than a box of frogs, you know, towards the end. Now, we're seeing the same sort of thing here. You know, he may well hang on, but, you know, he's got four guys behind him now, just one shot back. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be a knee trembler. The Majestics haven't had a podium finish since event four of 2022. That was for birdie for Henrik Stenson, so they still trail Ripper by three, but they have a two-shot cushion over Torquay in fourth place. Who's winning the team title? Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> well, Ripper statistically has got the... They, they don't have the hardest uh, remaining holes, but it, it's, it's just... I think it's a playoff. You think you, you whiff We're gonna, the playoff? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. he does. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah. 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 For the yeah. first time ever, just remind everybody how that would work. Say it was two teams in the playoff. Yeah. Uh, two teams in the playoff. The captain would pick two players from the team. They play aggregate uh, gross, uh, aggregate total score. Um, we could have three teams in a playoff quite easily here, and we could also have an individual an playoff individual quite easily. Playoff. Now yeah. you have Anser, Smith, and Stenson all finishing on the toughest hole in the course on 18. Casey and Ortiz are not. you got to give them a little bit of a nod in terms of catching him. Cam Smith started the day six back of Abraham Anser, and this is to tie for the individual lead. Trying to win his fourth Live Golf individual title. That's good. Perfect. Cam Smith charging like the champion that he is. What a bounce back to form for the Rippers captain. And all of a sudden from six back, Cam Smith is level with Abraham Anser on 13 under. And Ripper have a three-stroke cushion over the Crushers. In Poulter at 18. This would tie the Majestics for second. Abe answer Dom is now tied for the lead and I'm sure he knows that well there was a roar but I I only barely heard it and I'm a hundred yards up from them so I don't think he heard it oh, but he's had a beauty here low cut's gonna run like a baby's nose yeah <laughs> Well, if John Rahm has any chance of victory, surely he has to make this par putt. Well, he's looking odds on for a top 10 finish. It's just converting these excellent opportunities into an individual win, although it probably feels somewhat inevitable at some point. Um, Anthony King. What kind of a story is this? Anthony Kim. Another birdie. That's just not possible what he's doing today. I'm sorry. Uh, I know there's a lot of doubters out there, but that is just remarkable. Five under par today for Anthony Kim. He just has 14 to play the par four. Anthony Kim has a second best score on the golf course. You got some of the best players in the entire world playing here on a legendary golf course. Anthony Kim has played five rounds and 17 holes of competitive golf yeah. since he was in his 20s, early 20s. He's 38.
He said before this tournament that he's feeling good and he wants to contend he in didn't events this year. Hardly touch a club for 11. He didn't own a set of clubs for 11 years. Yeah. I mean, professional golf is not like riding a bike, ladies no, and gentlemen. No, you... it's it's a perishable skill. Yes. Where is it? I think he's owed one or two apologies on social media as well. Yeah. Anthony Kim. There's no oh. such thing. Yeah, Matt Jones's right foot just slipped like crazy there. That could affect Ripper GC, currently three clear of the Crushers. The Live Golf League is always looking to improve the fan experience both during the broadcast and on site to see the best players in the game for yourself in 2024. Just scan that QR code on your screen for tickets to future events. We're in Miami next, first week of April. Come and join us. Jones now is just going to fight to try and save bogey somehow. Stenson to save par at 16 and to keep the Majestics in that tie for third. The cleats are in solo third. Lucas Herbert at the 14th for Ripper GC. Oh, he played that beautifully. Herbert has that, and then he'll end his round on 15, the par four. Here's Cam Smith, our co-leader. And remember, at the start of play today, he trailed by six. there cam's playing well but it, it, it's not as if he's gone 62 63 sort of area today he's four under par yeah but the fact is abe eight, is two over no this i was just a solid nine yeah. 16. i like that you see the pin okay it's coming down just a little left of that flag stick all right all right buddy show me something Yes, good solid release. 9-9. Nine, nine. It's always hard to get it all the way to this back pin. This second shot seems to play half a club longer. He's been short on a few occasions with short irons. And this one, once again, is short. Yeah, it's got a little kick forward too. You know, I... Whatever happens here, Jerry, you know, it, it, he's got to wonder about that club that he hit off the tee at 15. Yeah. Why, why do you have enough club to reach the hazard? On the second easiest yeah. hole on the course, the only place, as you said, you cannot yeah. hit it. That was uh, Carlos Ortiz, his second shot into 18. He'll end at one. Bryson, a moment ago for birdie at one. Excuse me, 15. Sam Horsfield for birdie at six. They've got to start dropping these birdie putts for the Majestics if they're going to challenge Ripper. And that is magnificent from Sam Horsfield, who's five under par today. Paul Casey for a share of the individual lead and to close the crushers to within two of Ripper GC. An absolutely remarkable Championship Sunday here in Hong Kong. And Jerry, you said before a ball was struck this week that Paul Casey would be in in the shakeup. Well, I did say Brandon Grace was going to be with him. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Stay, hey, one out of two is not bad. I not, didn't say like you to be self-deprecating. The stats said that. The analytics, just to sound fancy. They also had an answer with a pretty decent shot as well, but not as strong as Casey. Phil second to 14. Go. Go. And the 
team competition, the cliques have stalled somewhat. They're 31 under par in fourth place. They are one behind the Majestics for third place. Crushers are one further up on 33 under. Ripper at the moment are three clear, but Matt Jones, this is his fourth into the par four 18th. Mark Leishman, his second at five. Oh, it's a tough one here. We have the big slope in front. We've got to bumble it up there, and that is a lot better than it looks. It's an excellent shot. At 14, Anthony Kim. Well, looks like he's going to try and play a little low hook here. Try and run it up that slope. Just didn't quite get enough of it. Oh, like a so semi close. top there. Yeah. He's five under par today. <laughs> Bryson. Bryson. That was to save par. Crushers stay in second. Matt Jones will drop at least one for Ripper GC. John Rahm, 17 fairway, three back of the lead. Birdie, birdie at minimum with any kind of chance. at 18 and Carlos Ortiz who's having an excellent championship Sunday Todd K are in fifth place two off the podium but this would tie the individual lead he has one hole to play after this the first that's a very quick putt down the slope Smith approach 17. You remember back to London last year when Cam had two putts to win the individual title, one putt to get into a team playoff. Yeah. And there was a bittersweet moment when he missed a relatively short putt. He won the title, but back then it was the four aces that took the team title. Now then, Anaban Lahiri, this for birdie at seven for the Crushers. Banter has an opportunity to reclaim the individual lead. It's a very slow putt, and in this situation, it's so hard to get yourself to hit it hard enough. It's a good line, but it's not going to get there. Whilst that was happening, Matt Jones to drop just one shot for Ripper GC, and that could be absolutely vital at 18 but Mark Leishman to say par at five are oh, the Rippers wobbling he's missed that they dropped to 34 under par and just like that a three shot lead is just one over the crushers to 16 in Chicago this is awesome <laughs> yeah this is cool <laughs> Too high there for Eugenio. There was a famous um, UK TV announcer who once said at a big sporting event, this couldn't get any better if Elvis Presley walked in and ordered fish and chips. <laughs> AK's third shot at 14. Oh, he puts mm. a little sauce on that. Well, if golf continues to provide the most outstanding viewer experience in golf, last week we unveiled the first iteration of our groundbreaking Any Shot, Any Time initiative. It's available on the web at livegolfplus.com. Every group on the golf course will be covered uh, live with AI-informed graphics. You can choose to see every shot of your favorite player. I know a lot of you have been following AK. Or switch from group to group for an amazing second screen experience. And AK has that put for a 65. <laughs> Ian Poulter at one. 
Majestics are two back. They've never won a team title. They haven't finished on the podium in 19 events. That's a good shot from there, 174 yards out. Yeah. A made his par at 16 to stay level with Cam Smith. top five in the team competition are 34 under 33 under 32 under and two teams on 30 under par ripper with that narrow advantage Stay for Cam Smith. Remarkably, for the outright lead. Casey, 12 under par, is playing with Bryson DeChambeau. They will finish their rounds at 16. Here's Abraham Anser, teeing off at 17. He's got to start all over again. This is a relatively easy tee shot, but I have a feeling it's all going to come down to the tee shot on the next hole for quite a few players. Well, two at least. And that's going to find the fairway, right side of it too. Up on the green, Henrik Stenson for birdie. This is at 17. Oh, he just tailed away, that would have gone. Majestics to 33 under again in a tie for second. Anthony came to finish his day with a par. A five under par, 65 for Anthony Kim in his sixth round back after a hiatus of almost 12 years from professional golf. What a remarkable performance by AK. Rom for par. 12 years, 12 days shy of 12 years ago, the last yeah. time Anthony broke that's, 70. That's an extraordinary feat. He just started keeping score a year ago and then broke his ankle. Yeah. Par for John Rahm to stay at 10 under. 
Waco Neiman, his second shot at four. Torque still harbour hopes of a podium finish or better. And that's a, an excellent birdie opportunity. He will finish on five. Yeah. Bryson has got it to within two of Cam Smith and Abe Anser. As a team, Crushers have one par five left. Par five left. One player. Majestics have one par five left for one player. Ripper does not. Suan, down to you. Anthony, you shot one of the lowest rounds today. Congratulations. That was impressive. How did you put a round like that together after being away from the game for 12 years? Um, I just kept doing what, I, what I've been working on the last two months. Um, obviously, being away from the game for so long has been tough to, to, to practice and, and get all the things that I need to get prepared for the tournament. But... Um, I'm working on the right things at this moment. I'm enjoying my time with my family. Um, the live golf experience has been amazing, and uh, I'm just thankful. Well, you've improved every round you've played. You've had six competitive rounds. How proud are you of yourself? I'm very proud. Um, coming from where I came from um, over the last 10, 12 years, I'm just very grateful for this opportunity. Um, every, every step I walk, I feel blessed. And uh, no matter what I shoot, I feel like I've won. Um, I never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but I'm uh, trying to play this game with a lot of gratitude and, and live my life the same way. Well, are you starting to feel some confidence? Definitely feel a lot better about my golf game. Um, golf isn't as important as, as living the right way and uh, the focus on my family and doing the right things. So uh, golf will come and it's just a matter of time. That's awesome, man. Really happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, he's, Thank you. he's accelerated in that process on Saturday and Sunday here in Hong Kong. This is Lucas Herbert for par at 16 to keep Ripper ahead. And it's missed. And the Crushers, are they going to do it again? They're tied for the lead. 33 under. Yeah, mate, exactly Crushers and I mean, Ripper we'll GC, one ahead of the uh, Majestic. Not much around, bro. Not right now. OK, club good, heavy. Commit to it, mate. What's our target? AK now goes to play the International Series in Macau. And if you want to see him back on US soil, come and see us at Doral in Miami at the start of April. Moments ago, Paul Casey, second at 16. The final hole of regulation for both he and his captain, Bryson DeChambeau. Oh, and that was in exactly the same spot we saw John Rahm. Sam Horsfield for birdie at seven. This one gets away. Anna Van Lahiri for the Crushers for birdie at eight. It's happening again. They are 34 under par. Bryson's team so clutch on Championship Sunday and they lead Ripper GC by one, but it isn't over yet. Matt Jones, second at one. That's a good chance. So Paul Casey's third at 16. Not a tough bunker shot. You are kidding me. You are kidding me. Paul Casey 
has made it a three-way tie at the top of the pylon. And the Crushers stupendously lead by two. This is absolute bedlam in Hong Kong. And Casey <laughs> is done. Anter and Smith have to play 18. Shambo still to Good finish time. on 16. 64 for Paul Casey today. Felt he didn't really contribute to that incredible come from behind victory last week. He was only one under par, but he certainly has today. And he may yet win the individual title. Bryson back at 16 here for a three shot lead for the Crushers. Uh, he's got to be careful here, just the first half of this putt is into the grain form, up the hill, and then it's down the hill to the hole, and that's why we've seen some of these big bounces over the back into the bunker. Casey 64 on Championship Sunday. Bryson will be a 66 when he taps that in. Um, uh, Anaban Lahiri has finished. One under par 69. Charles Howell the third is three under, playing his final hole, which is the par five third. Quite got it going today, HV3, in that final group. Mind you, none of them have. To the green at 16, and Brooks Kepka to finish his week. All right, zoom me on the putting green. You already made 100, I'll make me another one. Pour it in. Regain the lead. Yeah, we saw this a few weeks ago in Mayakoba when Neiman lost the lead. Finally, he found it within himself. Maybe it'll happen again. This is the first green, and this is Carlos Ortiz to make it a four way tie for the lead on 13 under this for a 65 torque are only one behind the majestics for third oh. Oh. he knows he knows the scoreboard has casey in the clubhouse that was needed for a chance a good line, don't you? okay then heavy Get fully committed, mate. Know your shot, see it in your head, and commit to it. Same bunker Matt Jones was in. Yeah, he's got a better stance at it, but that uh, spindly looking tree with the red flowers in it doesn't look like it's going to help any at all. Oh, well, just decided to punch it out. Smart play, all things considered. Yeah. So the uh, top three players and the score worms. And look at that advantage that Abraham Anser had. It was five coming into Championship Sunday. It was six over Cam Smith.
moment ago, this was not Jones for birdie at one. It was an eight stroke lead over Paul Casey. So Henrik Stenson finds himself in that same bunker. And it looks like he may hit a little punch as well. Cam Smith ending on 18, of course. Unless he is. He's hurting it. Yeah, he's hooting that down. He may well be trying to punch this under the tree. No. Yeah. He actually caught it. Only Stenson and Poulter out on the course for the Majestics, who are tied for second, a shot ahead of Tord K. Three behind the Crushers, who are winning and going away at the end for the second straight Sunday. The green at two, Ian Poulter for birdie. This is his final hole. Sixty-seven for Westwood today, sixty-five for Horsefield. This really has to drop. Ram at eighteen. He's not in an ideal spot either. Well, Arlo, nearly all precincts reporting. Crushers have this one. Three guys are finished. The lone remainder is Charles Howell playing the par five third, unless yep. he makes a triple there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, great effort from there. What a great finishing hole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the tougher, tougher tee shots you'll find about anywhere. And if you play it conservatively, even though you can't miss a fairway with an iron, you play it conservatively, you're left with a lengthy second shot. Well, the Majestic are still desperate for a podium finish. Crushers last weekend came from 11 back to win by four and today in Hong Kong they'll have come back from seven back they currently lead by three and Henrik may need to drain that to stay on the podium flat just flat here I mean, these flags aren't doing anything, mate. He's Just slightly off your left, isn't it? Yeah. What's the shot where we're landing it? Ending on the par five third as well. 87, it's too short. Yeah. Okay, happy? Yeah. Okay, what are we coming down on? Love it. Give me a shot, mate. Just judge the spin absolutely perfectly. Could hardly have played it better.
remember Paul Casey chips in from the greenside bunker at 16 to get to 13 under par. He's done for the day. There he is. I'll say more. I'll say more when I get done. This is how these three were tied for the lead. Abe Anser was 15 under par coming into Championship Sunday. This is his tee shot at 15. Uh, and why he had that much club is, is going to be a mystery to, to him, to me, to Jerry. Cam Smith has come roaring back from six back at the start of play. That was for Birdie at 16. He's four under par for his round. This was Paul Casey, and that was truly magical. A high five from his captain as well. That could be the crucial moment in what has been an enthralling team competition. This has to get in the fairway for Abe Anser. What would he give for the same tee shot he hit yesterday? Split the fairway right to the top of the hill. The local wildlife are excited as well. Well, he's done the same, but he's going to get down that slope. No, oh, yeah, that's a great tee shot. I hope it doesn't end on a down slope. No, it won't. It's got enough momentum to get to that first plateau. Torque are in solo second place. Waco Neiman hasn't added a third individual title in four, but he's playing brilliantly for his team. He is seven under par today. He's done for the day. Torque 33 under. They're all finished. It looks like they'll trail by two, but they are in solo second. This to stay on the podium for the Majestics. And it misses unless Cam Smith blows up, which is highly yeah. unlikely. Cam Smith misses that short one. Majestics get the podium by virtue of the tiebreaker. Lowest total score today. John Rahm for birdie. One under par 69 today for John Rahm. And a likely top 10 finish. Now Cam to stay tied for the lead. Answer is teed off at 18 behind him. Casey is done in regulation on 13 under. Abe Answer is watching from the fairway. 
what must be going through his mind. Well, he has hit it into the perfect spot. He's on the second plateau there on a flat lie. for Cam Smith and he's finished for Championship Sunday on 13 under so it's all down to Abe Anser and a birdie will give him the title this is Tyrrell Hatton putting with his uh, wedge for birdie at three oh, it's too much club What did you putt with on those rare occasions? When yeah, I would. Uh, I did exactly the same thing. Just played it with a sand wedge. Yeah. I used a one iron, but that's back when we all carried one iron. Yeah. Way too often. This is Charles Howell for birdie to put icing on the Crusher's cake once again. The Majestics have fallen agonizingly short of a podium finish. Ripper GC in third place, 32 under par. They're all finished. Torque have finished on 33 under. This also would move Charles up to a tie for sixth individually. Oh, goodness. It's a par to close things out for Charles Howe the third and the Crushers. Well, it's their golfing world at the moment, and we just live in it. They've won by two shots. They've gone back to back. Our reigning team champions who came back last week from 11 back to win. They've done it from seven back today to win by two. Remarkable. <laughs> well, it all comes down to this for Abe Anser. Three to win. And it's a pitching wedge. Once again, it's short. Oh, it stayed. It stayed up there just with the dampness, Dom. And the likelihood of a playoff just increased massively. That is. I mean, if it does indeed still stay there, and it might not, that's a huge break because that's all the way down around the bunker, isn't it, Dom? Near the water. If that rolls back. It looks pretty secure. Genio Chikara next. Hasn't been his day, hasn't been Abe Anser's day, still yet mine. It certainly hasn't been the Fireball's day. One over par collectively at the moment, a three shot lead. And they will finish off the podium comfortably in the end. Hong Kong, please welcome to the 18th green, your final grouping of the day, from Fireball GC, Gino Shakata, from Four Aces GC, Harold Barnum III, and from Fireball GC, Abraham Anser. There's Paul Casey. Was seven under par at the start of play today. Eight strokes back of Abraham Anser. And he carded a 64. Matt Jones and Cam Smith Ripper on the podium. Yep, it'll go from there. They'll wonder where it went wrong though as a team. They had leads of well, three or four shots in the closing holes, but 
once the crushers get going on championship Sunday they are a seemingly unstoppable force fireballs who had the lead coming into today uh, and without Chikara finishing are eight back they're going to wonder where it went wrong galleries are straining their necks for a view of the 18th green. Eugenio tied for 15th. He would have gone to bed last night hoping, expecting a lot better. But every shot vital in terms of winning points and prizes in each event towards the Live Golf League standings. He's got a chance. What will Abe Answers play be here? Aggression or safety? You know, you don't get that many chances to win. And, uh, you know, I, I have to feel, you know, if it's me, I, I, I get yeah, it. Where are you home. rolling in relation to that? This mark here in front. Don, what do you think? Rolling a little right of it in there. Yeah, I see. We'll get to Dom in a few moments. Abe answer. The Crushers are delighted. Paul Casey may yet be in the playoff unless Abraham answer can overcome a really tough day and put this away. And he can't. That for a three man playoff. It would be the second of the year already. Chikara will finish up. OK, then, Abraham answer. will feel that victory has slipped agonizingly through his fingers here, but this to stay alive in Hong Kong. We will have a three-man playoff to decide our champion in Hong Kong, Abe Answer. A 63 on Friday, a 62 yesterday, a five-shot lead coming into Championship Sunday. And he has carded a 72. Abe Answer, Cameron Smith and Paul Casey will go head-to-head -to, -head to decide the title.
All right, Hong Kong. The Crushers have sealed the team title, as you can see, by two strokes. Another remarkable comeback by Bryson DeChambeau's team. Suan, down to you. Bryson, congratulations once again to the Crushers. I mean, what is it about the Crushers' self-belief and the belief in each other? Because I saw you on the putting green this morning and you said, we're going to go Sunday low. That's right. I love these boys. They uh, fight for every shot. And I can tell you, when four scores are counting, we're a pretty deadly uh, team, I guess you could say. <laughs> I don't know what else to call us. Um, you know, I, I feel like I chose these guys early on. Uh, when Liv started, and I can't tell you how proud I am of them, just fighting for every single shot that they have. Uh, we know with four, four scores counting, we're going to be in it no matter what uh, the last day. So we uh, put the pedal to the metal today and uh, showcased who we are. Well, at what point today did you feel like the challenge was real? You guys started seven back. Yeah, again, came from behind. Uh, we're good at that. I'll say that we were probably through 12 or 13 holes after I made eagle and Paul made birdie on 13. That's when we looked up leaderboard, at the leaderboard and we were like, whoa, we're only a couple off. And those other teams kind of feel that heat. <laughs> I tell you that right now. And uh, we surely got the job done again. It was fun. Paul, your teammate is going back to the 18th so, for the playoff. Yeah. What do you think he's going to, what do you think he needs to do on the 18th? First off, I'm super pissed I didn't beat him today. Second <laughs> off, I'm super proud of him for uh, being tied for the lead and going down into a playoff. Um, I had a chance today. I had so many lip outs today. Like, oh, but that's the crazy dynamic about it. Like, it's the same thing that happened with Bond and me in Chicago last year. And uh, even when he holed out in the last last hole to beat me, I still gave him the biggest high five because it's it's so cool. It's such a cool team dynamic that we have and su super special. Uh, but I'm I'm proud of him. I'm gonna go watch him, see how he finishes off. This is a good hole for him. So. Well, you. Well, you guys are turning out to be a dynasty. Yeah, I, I hear you. Hey, look, that's what we said a, a year and a half ago. We just didn't have everything all uh, fine-tuned. Now we got it going, and hopefully it becomes a dynasty. Congratulations, man. Thanks. Uh, reigning Live Golf League team champions, and they've just gone back-to-back -back in remarkable fashion in Jeddah and in Hong Kong. Paul Casey today, simply magnificent. That was his tee shot at two. He carded a 64 on Championship Sunday. He felt the odd man out last week with a 69 as they came from 11 back to go 20 under par and win by four. This is Bryson's eagle put at 13, and it was really on at this stage. This is for birdie at 14, and they were just unstoppable. Lahiri, it was his turn to card a 69 at one under par. He knew the significance of that. That was for birdie at eight after his 65 last weekend. It's just remarkable. 11 back last weekend, 20 under par to win by four, seven back today. They go 14 under and they win by two over Tor K. What a performance and Paul Casey may yet win his first individual Live Golf title. And he's walking back to the tee at 18. It's Johnny Longsocks McLaren with him. It's a long time caddy. What a day. Sporting drama at its highest, and we're not done yet. I wonder what must be going through Abe Anser's mind, because he has no momentum at all going into the playoff. Remember, Paul Casey chipped in from the greenside bunker to make it to the playoff. Fans around the world are loving it. Are you not entertained? Uh, says Moga Golf. Crushers GC comeback, double aced, and a three way playoff for the title. Back to back wins for the Crushers. Another come from behind win in Hong Kong. The 2023 champions are crushing it. They certainly are. An absolutely electric championship Sunday in Hong Kong, says Jay. It's box office, A. Eh, Thompson. It certainly is. Let's take a look at the 18th hole, David, at the Hong Kong Golf Club. Yeah, it's not that long. It's just 410 yards. It's down the hill, but you can see how narrow it gets through the driving area here. That's the bunker those guys find themselves in across the water. And there's a false front to this green, a false back. Pretty much everything about it is false. You just got to get it dead right. Okay. Cam's been in one playoff in the Live Golf League. That was in Tulsa after a final round of 61. Dustin Johnson took the victory against Cameron and Brandon Grace on the first playoff hole. He's also 
already won three live golf titles he could be the first to four with victory here one in Chicago in his first season in London and Bedminster last year so uh, three who finished on 13 under par this was uh, a big mistake, David, on 15 for Abe Anser. Yeah, I have to think that, you know, he and Benji Thompson thought that the fairway was soft enough you know, that he could hit that club and, you know, come up short, but that was a serious error. 72 for Abe, that was birdie at 16 for Cam Smith, a 66 for him, and this for Paul Casey to get into the playoff. And his captain, Although he was beaten by Paul Casey, celebrates with him. That sealed the team title, and he got Paul Casey into the three-way playoff after a 64 today. He started the day eight shots back of Abe Anser. All three players have winning playoff records in their careers. One and O for Anser, four and three for Smith, five and three for Casey. <laughs> Well, Sue Ann Heng is going to call Cam Smith shots and Don Boulay on home turf. A member of this golf club is going to call Abe Anser and Paul Casey's shots. Well, we'll see who draws the, the long straw here, or however they decide who goes first. I know. I want to go first. Yeah. Plan. That's for sure. I want to put one in the fairway. Hey, Paul. Hey. Yeah, so we'll, we'll just let's draw it real quick. Do the first hole out. So we draw first, and then we'll go with first next. Three. One, two, three. All right, guys. We're going to continue to play 18 until there's a winner, okay? Yes, sir. We'll continue that same way. Guys, good luck. Paul Casey will be first. Totally agree with you, David. It's great to go first. And he has been one of the best long iron players in the game for 15 years, Paul Casey. And he's got an iron in his hands. If he can just rip one up the middle, that puts so much pressure on the other two. He parred it on Friday and today. He bogeyed it on Super Saturday. We may have a Mexico situation here. It's getting... Very dark out here. <laughs> it's barely got light all day, Dom. Well, that's true. Oh, is that going to carry the bunker? It's outright. He's getting fully committed here, mate. Yep. Well, the eighth. After broke. Individual playoff in live golf history is underway. So when you're calling Cam Smith shots. Well, that up and down he made on the 18th, Three. that was clutch. Three. That reminds me very much of what he did at the players back in 22. Well, he took out a seven wood this week, put in a three iron. That's what he's hitting off the tee. He's still in that bunker on the right. Certainly wants to hit the fairway here. Redemption, baby. Redemption. Yeah, a little in. Still a little on far left here. Same shot we just hit right there. That's all right. Screen. All right, come in, do a shot. Okay, then. A bounce up. It's the same club he's hit the last two days. Looks like it. Which he split the fairway both times. Oh, oh good swing. That split the fairway again. A really good swing right when he needed it. Oh, that's going to be on the down slope. Three pars this week for Abe Anser on 18. So. A three-man playoff to decide our champion on what has been an absolutely thrilling championship Sunday. The Crushers have taken the team title. Who will win the individual Hong Kong championship? Um, 
so I'm going with Alf Casey You're twice what? won at Innisbrook, David, where the PGA Tour will be playing in a few weeks, and that is also known as a ball strike. Of okay. course, it yeah. separates yeah. the guys who get it done tee to green from the guys who fashion. Bryson and Oban and Charles Howe the third are in the 18th fairway supporting their teammate. They'll be doused in champagne not too long from, from now as team champions. We get a report from Dom and Sue Ann with Paul Casey's looking at up there and the, he's going to have to deal with a little bit of uh, interference between him and the hole from those trees it appears. Yeah. Hey, I'm standing right over Paul Casey's ball and yeah the, the scoreboard that's to the right side here. If the referee deems that's a reasonable shot that he takes on he may get relief. Can he can he put a full swing on the on the golf ball and get it uh, over the water. Absolutely. Well, then Absolutely. that's there's no there's no yeah there's no if he could execute the shot and that scoreboard is between him and the hole on the line of sight he gets relief. Well, even if he gets relief, he's he's going to be blocked by trees, but he's got a chance to at least hit a big cut. Bonus goal for you here from Hong Kong. A three way playoff for the title. Answer Casey and Smith all finished on 13 under par. They like four. Count first, you want? What's our shot, mate? And tops of these trees are just barely moving yeah. off your left. It has to be a little bit in. A little bit in and a little bit off the left. It's not much. Yeah. What are you thinking? I like just playing at the number and playing in a couple short. I love that. Yep. Coming down on. And just straight on it, mate. Nice. Yep. Heavy? Ready? Yep. Love it. Come into it, mate. A little bit into the wind, a little bit downhill, so it's just going to play the number. Yeah. He's got eight iron. He the angle the that hole. he's coming from. Sorry, Suan. He bogeyed the hole on Friday and parred it yesterday and today. Probably a very good score. Ah! Not sure if his right foot didn't slip and touch there. Wow, that's a bad shot. When you least expect it from Cam Smith. Did not see that coming, Jerry. No. Dom, you're following Paul Casey. He's not getting relief because not only does it have to be on his line of sight, it has to be on his line of intended play, and there's no way. He would be going through the tree, so he's just going to chip him out. Yeah. All of a sudden, advantage Abraham. Oh, dude, he's got the right one. Good, solid one of these. See a shot and do it for him. Well, advantage Abraham answer, but you just can't in your mind assume par is going to get it done here. It's a 9 9 from a slight downhill lie. Can he get one pin high? He hasn't had, has, hasn't done so pretty much all day. Great aggressive swing. What a time 
to deliver a shot like that. After his trials and tribulations on Championship Sunday, he's in the box seat in the playoff on the first hole. Let's take another look. Lovely relaxed follow through. Beautiful rhythm to the swing and just a great shot at exactly the right moment. The fireball's reaction. Sergio Garcia made a playoff in Mexico in our first event of the season and went down to Waco Neiman. That took four holes. And Paul Casey, well, he may need to hold this. And he did he did it from further uh, from closer in, but from the greenside bunker at 16 to get into the playoff. Pretty pitch, so yeah. 98. 99. Pretty full sandwich. Watch the spin. Good shot. Well, at least Abanza will feel that he, in the playoff, has a chance here to go out and win it, rather than allow others to lose it. Born in McAllen, Texas, raised in Reynosa, Mexico. The guy who introduced him to the game, his father, passed away suddenly from a heart attack right when he was getting his professional career going. It's one thing, oh goodness, for Cam Smith. Uh, that was a huge mistake, being the first to go on the 18th fairway. Could have put some pressure on. That bad. Abe. It's just going to tumble, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yep. Uh, Commit to your shot, mate. Ball's above his feet. Yeah. He's got a lot of green to work with. Yeah, with a ball above his feet like that, it's extremely difficult to get this ball online. Just got to be careful. Six, six yards past this hole, everything just goes all the way down to the other side. favorite. Well, Smith will give Casey a bit of a read, but one of them has to make it. Otherwise, it's just ceremonial for answer. on Abraham Anson. Oh! 
Cam will be the first to four live golf titles here in Hong Kong. Bogey five. AC must make. Still a light sprinkling of rain here at the Hong Kong Golf Club. It's almost added to the drama. His crushers have won the team title. Par putt for Paul Casey in the first playoff hole. Mighty fine effort by Paul Casey. Start of the day, seven back. 64 got him into the playoff. And the spotlight falls on Abraham Anser. Two putts to win. A scenario, the greatest scenario he could have hoped for when he teed off at 18 in this playoff. The bubbles are ready. Abraham Anser has endured the full gauntlet of golfing tribulations today, but he has walked out of the wilderness in Hong Kong as a champion. He lost it once. He had to go out and win it again, and he held his nerve beautifully in the playoff. It's his first Live Golf title. He's the 14th individual winner in our history. so hard on myself. His five-shot lead was wiped out, but he prevails on the first playoff hole. And now he's doused by his fireballs teammates. <laughs> he had two, and he only needed one. And good on Abraham Anser, because it didn't go his way today with a 72. Saw that five-shot lead evaporate but he birdies 18 for the first time this week to take the title. Well, that was quite a show. Calm down to you. Hey, winning is clearly not easy, but to win your first live event in this fashion with a birdie in a playoff, you've got to be absolutely stoked. Man, that was, uh, I made that so hard on myself. Um, the ball striking wasn't there, but mentally I was really strong, so I felt, I felt really good. I felt like uh, I, was, I was not going to give up. Uh, that round could have gone south really quickly and uh, hit some good, some good bunker shots, some good putts that I needed to, and just kept myself in it and uh, hit the right shot at the right time there on the playoff. A five-shot lead is so hard. What were the thoughts going through your mind and your body during the day? Yeah, like I said, it was it was tough. Uh, my mind it was there, and my swing wasn't there, which it was, it was weird because it felt so solid all week. But just got to stay in it. Obviously, felt the pressure. A lot of big-time caliber players right behind me. So I knew I needed to make some birdies. Uh, 
couldn't really make any birdies. I actually made a dumb bogey there, hitting it in, the, in that creek, which I, I couldn't believe. Still, uh, still mad about that. But man, I'm just so happy because I've worked, I worked my ass off these last couple of years. That tee shot on 18 in the playoff. Did you draw inspiration from the fact that you've hit two great shots there yesterday and earlier in the day? Yeah, I just kept picturing that same ball fly, that little low penetrating draw, and I was like, hey, this is just one more time. You have to do it. I've been here before and just do the same thing. Tell us about the 15th tee shot. Was that a miscalculation? No, I felt like with that club, I could maybe, maybe get to the very left, but I, I've hit every single one to the middle, to the right, and uh, I didn't want to give myself too far of a shot for that tough pin, so it was just a bad swing, went a little left on me and barely went in there. You're a proud Mexican. Is the goal now to win an Olympic gold for Mexico? Yeah, that's the, uh, definitely one of the goals that I've, that I've written down for, uh, for me this, uh, this year. Uh, hopefully, hopefully be there and, and kick some ass because that would be amazing. <laughs> it's a great town to celebrate and a great place to start is that veranda right there. Have I'm a ready. great evening. I'm ready, boss. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Enjoy. Thank you. The no Don Boulay veranda. Let's uh, check on some highlights. He's already an Olympian for Mexico, Abraham Anza, and he's the Pan American Games gold medalist. He won that in uh, Chile before Christmas, but it was a real struggle out there today. The Olympic Games, the Summer Olympic Games this year, of course, in Paris after uh, our live golf event in the UK. That was his second shot at the eighth. Hadn't made a bogey in his opening 40 holes in Hong Kong. Then he made a couple very quickly, both on the par threes. This is a tee shot at 15 that Dom asked him about. Yeah, that birdie putt at 10 was the I think the difference maker because yeah. it was going south and that turned it around. Yeah, that was pivotal. His second shot into the 18th on the first playoff hole. Absolutely wonderful. He had two putts to win it. After bogeys for Paul Casey and for Cam Smith, he only needed one. It was only his second birdie of the day. Oh, Abe Anser, our winner in Hong Kong, congratulated by Commissioner and CEO Greg Norman. I think he'll sleep tonight. <laughs> What a magnificent day of golf we've seen here on Championship Sunday in Hong Kong. The team competition went all the way. It was back and forth, to and fro all day. Abe Anser just saw his lead. It's five shot lead, six over Cam Smith, and seven over Paul Casey just whittled away gradually. But that is the state of play. Abe Anser on the first playoff hole, the eighth playoff in Live Golf history, and he wins his first title. 13 under par in the end. And the winner so far this year, look at Waco Neiman. Finished one shot back. Waco Neiman winning Mayakoba, Legion 13, took the team title in their first ever competition, the expansion team. Dustin Johnson returned to form in Las Vegas. It was Smash GC, Brooks Kepka and Ray McDowell doing excellently. Waco again, this time by four shots in Jeddah. The Crushers came back from 11 back to win by four. And here in Hong Kong, Abe Anser wins, but in a playoff. And the Crushers come back, back from seven back to win by two. <sighs> wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. I mean, that is impressive by Abraham Anser because yeah. he lost that title basically had no momentum wasn't playing great it was Paul Casey who chipped in from the bunker to get into the playoff Cam Smith playing as usual excellently on Championship Sunday but that as an as a example of holding your nerve when it counted was magnificent yeah for answer. sure you know he went through the full gamut of emotions uh, over the three days really you know and, and t today was it was death by a thousand cuts, you know, and until the final moment when he needed to hit the great shot, you know, at, at, at exactly the right time. Uh, and that's what great champions do. It was his tournament to lose starting the day and he lost it and mm. then he won it. And that's when you really proved to yourself what you're truly made of.
and it, what must go through your mind at some point is the psychological effect of losing it in tournaments to come but he won't have to worry about that Abraham answer his first live golf victory let's send you down to the podium and the presentations here in Hong Kong in the uh, time to meet the top in the rain individual finishers. the brollies are up but it has been a quite magnificent championship Sunday Cam Smith had the opportunity to become the first lift golfer to four individual titles. It's the second time he's lost in a playoff, but still three titles for Cam Smith. Paul Casey, it's his best finish as a lift golfer, and he is a vital member of that band of brothers, the Crushers GC, who will be on the podium shortly. But for now, it's all about this man, Abraham Anser, 33 years of age. He is a champion in the Live Golf League. He'll have plenty of room in the house down at his 1,500-acre ranch in the San Antonio area to place that trophy. Also has his own, has his own uh, tequila brand, has a clothing brand. He's just a little, he's an entrepreneur in every sense of the word, and, and he's, you know, he has long been viewed as an underdog in the game and he just keeps proving and proving and proving that he belongs. What more can we say about Crusher's GC that hasn't already been said? They are our reigning team champions. They came good halfway through last season and they took the title in Miami and they've started this season in magnificent form. They don't like to lead from the front. What they like to do is go incredibly low on Championship Sunday. They've got back-to-back -back after victory in Jeddah last weekend when they trailed by 11 going into Sunday's play. They went 20 under par to win by four. Today they trailed by seven and they go 14 under par and they win it by two. A remarkable back-to-back -back team success for Crushers GC. But what a day, what an emotionally draining day, I'm sure, for Abraham Anser. A five-shot lead going into Championship Sunday. Eugenio Chicada and Harold Varner, the third, teed off with him in our last group. And he carded a 72 after opening the tournament with a 63 and a 62. So, whew, it almost slipped away, but Abraham Anser collected himself quite magnificently in the playoff to birdie it. Wacko Neiman with another amazing performance to get to 12 under par. Louis Ustase an eight under. Taylor Gooch, another fine performance by him, seven under par, so consistent. Patrick Reed, five under par. And then as we go a little further down, Anthony Kim. Okay, 50th place, but today a 65. Well played, AK, who now plays in the International Series event in Macau. The final standings here in Hong Kong in the team competition, the Crushers win by two over Todd K. Ripper managed to get the podium finish. The Majestics miss out. It's 20 events without a podium finish for the Majestics now, but that was a fine performance by Poulter, Westwood, Horsefield, and Stenson. For those watching in the USA and around the world, leaving us now, it's time to switch over to Club 54, the Live Golf Post Round Show, which can be found globally on the Live Golf Plus or the Live Golf YouTube channel and in the USA on the CW app. We'll see you again the first week in April for Live Golf Miami. We all need a lie down. <laughs> Goodbye from Hong Kong. round has come to an end plus a playoff the rain is absolutely pouring what a day crushers gc with another unbelievable team win and a playoff 
with the individual winner being Ev Abe Answer. We're live in Hong Kong right here at the Hong Kong Glove Club, and this is Club 54 Post Round Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and joining me is Sue Ann Hang, and we are in the rain right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, yeah, it's pouring, but it's time pretty well because it was light all day, but now it's just hammering down. I mean, Hong Kong golf fans are unreal. I feel like today had the most people out there. How was it being out there with the fans today? It was, it was great. It I mean, fun. the atmosphere was awesome. You know, I think Hong Kong have been looking forward to this event for a really long time. And we talked about how great this event is for Asia, for Hong Kong, for golf in this region. It is phenomenal. And you look, the fans turned up. They wanted to watch some golf, and they got some good golf today. Well, you were watching some good golf all day. Cam Smith being one of the people that you follow today. I mean... I don't know where to start. <laughs> I'm going to leave it up to you, Sue Ann. Tell us about your day with Cam Smith. I yeah, mean I mean, he, he started off to a great start, a, a bogey-free four-under, uh, made a phenomenal up and down on the 18th, kind of reminded me a little bit about it, the, his up and down when he played the Players' Championship back in 22. That was pretty clutch. He made that same up and down to get into that playoff. He, I know he's a little disappointed with the result yeah. of the playoff, but uh, he should be really proud of himself. He but got off to a really poor start to the season and seems like he's getting some form back. Well, shall we take a look at some of his uh, highlights? Let's do it, Sue Ann, let's go. It's Cam Smith, had a great day today. Yeah, Wasn't he what a... he was looking for at the end. But... Yeah, this was a, a great three with it. He hit on the third. And right. of course, Cam does what Cam does. He's so good on the greens. This is his second shot into the sixth. And now this is his birdie putt on the 13th par five. Crowd was loving it. Yeah, he made a great up and down there. And this is his birdie putt on the 16th on the live line, left to right slider. And he was definitely trending on X. Let's take a look. Look at all these t tweets here. Uh, wow, Cam Smith, what a birdie. Worth getting up early for. It is early uh, <laughs> in some places right now. Uh, he was on a mission today, and he was, you know, at the top of that leaderboard all day long with the usual suspects. One of them being John Rahm, uh, mm -hmm. who you got to follow as well today. John Rahm, it was it was so much fun watching him. It was some highs and some lows for him. Uh, you got to see it all. What's your first take? Just recapping John Rahm's day. Well, you know, I think he hit some really good shots today and and i think his putter let him down i think he just missed a few short ones a couple of maybe not so solid um performance around the greens and i think that's a part of his game i'm sure he's going to want to work on just watching him this all week this yeah. week his short game's not as sharp as probably he wants it to be let's take a look at some of his big moments from today it's john ron ladies and gentlemen sue ann you are up close and personal with these well, he started off on a good start. Birdie there on his opening hole, putting some pressure on Abraham Answer. I spoke to his caddy uh, earlier this morning, Adam Hayes, and he said, I think John is going to play aggressively today because he started the day six shots back. Now, this phenomenal shot on the ninth, he had to hit a huge high draw around the trees into the left hole location, put the ball back in his stance. That was signs of a Masters champion right there, a shot that he had to hit at Augusta National. And this birdie on the 10th. All right, so you mentioned the short game before us mm -hmm. as we get ready for Miami. What, what does a guy like John Rahm do? We know he's great, right? So well, what does a guy like John Rahm do as he gets into uh, his preparation for Miami? Well, you know, when I spoke to Adam Hayes this morning, he said, I don't actually feel like John is playing his best golf, but yet he is contending. He just is trying to settle down. It is only his fourth event here sure. on Live. He's playing a very different role to what he's used to. Uh, you know, back then, before he joined Live, it was a very much an individual sport for him. He was right. only focused on winning. Not that he's not focused on winning right now. I'm sure he's very focused on that. But he does have to play captain. He does have to play mentor to, to guys like Kieran, to guys like Caleb. He's putting a lot of energy into the franchise. There's just he's taking time to settle down and so if you think about that as a whole the fact that he has contended in his first four events sure. just proves how good of a player he is all right well let's take a look at some uh moments from today john wasn't hoping for and uh you got to see it up close and personal 
Here's John doing his thing and uh, That's what I was saying yeah. all day today. He hit some great iron shots, gave himself some great opportunities just didn't quite make those putts that needed to be made to put the pressure on Abraham. And this is a missed putt on the fourth. We call this the low lights, Christian. <laughs> and you can see there, he started that online and just got so unlucky. He's got to be really proud of himself because he did give himself all those great opportunities today. He, he's definitely been a, a treat to watch. I can't wait to see what he does in Miami. I, I love hearing about your day and how you followed him <laughs> around. I think you need a jacket, by the way, with all this rain out here. I need a warm all back. All right, we're going to uh, <laughs> keep the show going. It's the post-round show, Club 54. We got a lot more to talk about. Stay tuned. All right, it's a hard decision to pick a favorite team here at Live Golf League. But let's take a look at what some of the guys had to say. Probably six or seven teams that could they could win the thing and you wouldn't be surprised. Torquay look really strong. Every day it was some someone shooting like five, six on the par. Did they learn how to win and they just kept winning? Torquay is so deep. You know, like they go one through four as good as anybody. Obviously the crushers were won last year, extremely solid. Crushers are what they did last year. I feel like you have to pay attention to them. They're the ones on the mountaintop right now. They're holding the trophy. They got their hands on the trophy. Nobody else does. You know, the Fireballs are going to be a strong team this year. Having Pooch in there, who's, who played really good in the second half of the season, is going to be a good team. I'm only focused on our team. To be honest with you, that's, that's the only team I care about. What Brooks has done with Smash, that's definitely going to be a team that we're going to be battling out quite a bit this year. Any team that Taylor Gooch happens to be on is obviously a team you got to kind of watch out for. I mean, they're going to be super strong. The Stingers are always a very strong team. They've won tournaments. Louis coming on really strong. Four aces are always going to be the four aces. They've created that name. They've created that environment. Four aces, obviously, with Dustin and them, are always going to be strong in the addition of Harold Barner. They are, I mean, great four players. It really is everybody, right? Clear. It's all about this guy named Abe Answer. X is going crazy. People are tweeting about it. Congrats to Abe Answer for winning his first Live Golf League title. What a shot on the playoff hole. I mean, Sue Ann, this doesn't surprise us. It was unbelievable. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time today. It, it was so much fun. I mean, what do you think about this? He's Any getting so much love from Mexico. <laughs> I mean, he is a proud Mexican. It's long overdue. He's played some great golf. He's had some struggles. I'm so happy for him. What a way to close out that playoff. It was so much fun to watch. Uh, we're going to talk about it more. And we, we have someone who had the ability to follow him around all day today. Yeah. And joining us to talk some Abe answer chat is Dom Boulay. Dom, you did a great job in that post interview with Abe. That was so much fun to hear uh, his yeah, take. Thanks very much. I enjoyed it. He's an easy interview. <laughs> <laughs> he said I said I made it hard for myself, but I pulled through. Um, tell me about your day with Abe Answer. Well, he was clearly, you know, like he said in this interview, his mind was good. He, you know, he was positive, uh, but his swing wasn't there. And you it could tell right from the beginning. Uh, he hit some squirrely shots and he was missing them both ways, which is unusual. And uh, we described it in the halftime show. Basically, you know, he wasn't really completing his swing and he was getting stuck inside. And you can go both ways, but what a birdie. On, in that playoff hole, absolutely phenomenal. Well, Dom, Dom, I know the last couple of days he only missed two greens. Yeah. And he missed two greens in his first what three holes? He missed seven the first nine holes. I mean, oh, oh, it's unbelievable. He it's just like didn't reverse. have it just his reversed, game, but yeah. he never got flustered. He remained positive. He never looked dejected. His shoulders didn't shrug. He was not shaking his head. So he did all the right things mentally. Yeah, I mean, he's got a, a very a seasoned caddy on the bag as yeah, well, Benji. Benji's a good guy. Yeah, and I think that really helped him in that situation to not panic. Yeah, right? Benji, he, I heard him say a couple of things on the putt on 17. He says, oh, you've held hundreds of these, just make it another one, which is the positive thoughts that you want your caddy to give mm -hmm. you when you're just over a putt, you know, to take the outright lead at the time. Simple, didn't make it. simple but needed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very effective. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at some of Abe Answer's highlights here. Take a look. All right, let's talk about it. Here we go. 
Yeah, I mean, it was a poor tee shot. And luckily, he got a lot of check on that third bounce. Otherwise, he would have been in the other bunker. And that, the next par three, almost an impossible shot. He, once again, lucky that didn't come back down into the bunker. I think the wet conditions helped that. Yeah, it, it did. Yeah, it was getting moist out there. But this was huge, a huge moment. His first birdie of the day Woo! on the 10th hole. That would have made him feel really good. He deserved it. I mean, the first two days he played fabulous golf. He gave himself the cushion. He lost it, as Jerry said, and he won it again. Hey, Dom, I got to ask, I, I noticed how just enthusiastic the Hong Kong crowd was here. I'm uh, very Do you proud. think that had anything to do with <laughs> yeah. how these guys performed, how Abe did? Yeah. Look, all these guys, they love to play in front of crowds. All professional golfers are show-offs. And if you got nobody watching you, you can't show off to anyone. And I'm proud that Hong Kong showed up today, even in not ideal weather. All right, well, we're going to bring Jerry Fultz in here in just a moment. Let's take a look at some social here. Uh, fans are talking about it. They can't get over it. And here's from Fireballs GC. Abe, you are a champion. Fire emoji, fire emoji. There's two of them, baby. Congratulations for winning in Hong Kong. What a performance. You got to love to see it. Shout out to the graphic, too. I mean, absolutely cool there. Um, Jerry Fultz coming in to chat a little bit more about our day. We're going to talk a little team talk, and you know we had to bring up Crushers GC. More to come here on Club 54 post-round show. Stick around. It's pouring raining. It's cold. We're, uh, <laughs> we're here doing our thing. And Jerry Fultz is in. He's wired up, and we're ready to chat Crushers GC. Jerry Fultz, welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> How are you, brother? A little Good wet you, from, uh, a little <laughs> wet. from my, you, uh, my trip up here. Not the club. too bad. You're everywhere from the main show right here through the rain, man. Yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate and it. And I heard Dom was opening a tab right upstairs here soon. What is your number? Membership B four nine nine. Go for your life, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk Crushers GC. Uh, down by eleven in Jetta. Down by seven today. First thoughts before we get into any highlights, Jerry, of, of how incredible this team is playing right well, now. Well, like Dom just said, it was it was Abraham Anter's tournament to uh, to lose, and he did, but then he won it, and I think that's when you prove to yourself what you're truly made of, and, and he did today. Crushers are no surprise. They uh, Seven back starting the day. They're the team to beat this year. It was Torque last year, but our defending team champions are the team to beat now. Yeah. Yeah, they've got so much confidence, haven't they? I mean, they came back from 11 in Jeddah. They were, I think, believe seven back uh, today. They just don't ever feel like they're out of it, especially now that we've gone to four players and they have such depth. They really can win every week, I feel, right now. They really do. They have four veteran players, all great ball strikers. And the more they pull off things like this, the more dangerous they're going to be because that confidence, that self-belief in, in them as a collective team and in each other just continues to grow. I saw Bryson DeChambeau uh, in his interview. He said he was so proud of his team, and you could tell he really meant that. Um, let's show you why with these highlights here. And, Jerry, take us through it. Um, Dom, feel free to chime sure. in, too. I love how you guys break it down. So let's break it down. This is Crusher's GC, baby. Here yeah, we go. This is the par three second. Lovely hole. Oh, dangerous pin today. But Paul Casey obviously played brilliantly. And that, you couldn't place it in a better spot. Here's Casey. For birdie, not a lot of lengthy putts like that came in, and I don't, I don't remember seeing hardly any lip in like that no. all week long. We saw a big lip out from Answer on the third. Now Deschambeau on the 14th, and then David Faraday had just got done saying this is not a tough bunker shot, or maybe it was you. <laughs> no, it was it was Faraday because this is a pretty easy bunker shot, but not that easy for Casey. All right, we got some social here from fans talking about Crushers GC. This is a Crushers GC post, actually. Back to back, two weeks, two wins, Jetta and Hong Kong. And in dominant fashion for the squad, you did say uh, Casey's, you, earlier you said Casey Smith would be a, a game changer. No, it was, uh, well, it was, oh, was Casey it? Smith and uh, Casey Smith and, uh, and of course, answering the playoff. But no, yeah. Paul Casey, 
was one of those guys, one of three or four guys who statistically, based on the analytics, was supposed to play well. Um, and he was the only one who made me look good. Yeah. <laughs> you always look good, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into Torque GC. I know we have some clips from their day. Uh, this team is just unbelievable. Let's take a look at some of this Yeah, here. Sebastian Munoz with that anvil he uses as a putter. Very effective there. Lovely birdie on the fourth. And Mito Pereira, not the best putter on the team, but certainly Tita Green, one of the best players there is. There's a beauty there. Now, Carlos Ortiz, watch out for this man. Won two weeks ago in Oman, in contention here today. I think he's going to get a win fairly shortly. Did I say Pereira was one of the best tee to green? Well, there's also this guy, Wako Neiman, on the tee at eight early in the day, the fifth ace Ooh. in live golf history. We also oh. have the sixth later on in the day. Yeah, I, I love the hole in one. Honestly, I, it's so cool to see him celebrate that hole in one. Like, it's not that big of a deal to him. He yeah. just was so chill when he was doing those high fives, which I love to see. Yeah, at uh, that, I mean, that was early in the round. At that moment, he's thinking about number one, Torque, number two, him trying to climb that leaderboard and probably to have a chance to win his yeah. third. Well, yeah. there's one guy that I want to chat about today, Anthony oh. Kim. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I would love to hear your take on his day today. I know you spoke about it in the main show, just how phenomenal it is to see the you, quick progression of Anthony Kim you know, in a short period of time. It's, I mean, I'm going to sound like I'm a little bit of a, of a cheerleader here, but, Dom, in my opinion, what he did today is yeah. – well, first of all, you owe me money. Uh, for, uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. I was thinking that, but I, I bet on the it. birdies he was making. And I don't know what like, oh, made me man. even think about <laughs> trying to play, lay that wager with you, but it, just, it was just something about the way he was talking and the way he was swinging that made you think that it's possible. That, it, conventional wisdom said that is absolutely not possible. No, it, it really shouldn't be, Jerry. And I just heard his interview with Sue Ann at the end, and he's just grateful to be out here. It's a second lease of his life. He's now married with a kid, and I just think he wants to show show them, especially as kid, what he is great at. 11 years away from the game. Didn't own a set of clubs for 11 years. When he started getting the itch again to maybe think about this improbable return, he used his wife's golf clubs initially. Then got a set <laughs> wow. of clubs. Bought them online. And, uh, and this week, he, actually a few weeks ago, he got an actual real set of tour clubs and didn't get them fitted till this week. It is absolutely, I mean, had Dustin Johnson show him how to use a track band yeah. last week. Last he week, reported. absolutely. I mean, it's just, it's uh, it, his first yeah. drop that he had to take, he dropped it from yeah. shoulder height. Yeah. He didn't know the rules. He, he didn't he, know the new rules. He forgot to take a ball marker with him last week. <laughs> <laughs> He's been out We can't so make long. this up. No, I know. No. You cannot. Well, let's take yeah. a look at some Anthony Kim highlights and uh, talk about it. Here's Anthony Kim. Also loved his swag today with the fit. Big tell, fan over here. Tell you what's been impressive, his putting. His putting's been great both weeks. It has been. And and anybody who's played competitive golf or just, I mean, a, a guy who plays a lot of golf, recreational golf, who plays a lot, and they take a few weeks to a month off, their short game goes in the tank so quickly. 12 years off, and he's he's third in putting starting the week. He might have ended up the week leading in putting. Everyone in the middle of the hole by the looks of it, and not short ones either. Look at this. Look at the pace. Oh, that went in the right side, but it went in. Yeah, but the pace was fantastic even last week, the first week back. I mean, this is his first round of the 60s in 12 days short of 12 years. Would your, would your guess be that he just keeps getting better and better and better as we keep going through these tournaments? Uh, my, my guess, I mean, 65 might prove to be an aberration when this year's all said and done playing that well, but I wouldn't put it past him to to get back to close to this, his championship form from his early days in, in a much shorter amount of time than anybody expected. And you know what? He's playing next week in Macau in the International Series. He is serious about this comeback. He wants to get as many reps as he possibly can. Well, Sue Ann had a chance to catch up with Anthony after his round. Let's tune in. Anthony, you shot one of the lowest rounds today. Congratulations. That was impressive. How did you put a round like that together after being away from the game for 12 years? Um, I just kept doing what, I, what I've been working on the last two months. Um, obviously, being away from the game for so long has been tough to, to, to practice and, and get all the things that I need to get prepared for the tournament. But... Um, I'm working on the right things at this moment. I'm enjoying my time with my family. Um, the live golf experience has been amazing, and uh, I'm just thankful. Well, you've improved 
every round you've played. You've had six competitive rounds. How proud are you of yourself? I'm very proud um, coming from where I came from um, over the last 10, 12 years. I'm just very grateful for this opportunity. Um, every, every step I walk, I feel blessed. And uh, no matter what I shoot, I feel like I've won. Um, I never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but I'm uh, trying to play this game with a lot of gratitude and, and live my life the same way. Well, are you starting to feel some confidence? Definitely feel a lot better about my golf game. Um, golf isn't as important as, as living the right way and uh, the focus on my family and doing the right things. So uh, golf will come and it's just a matter of time. That's awesome, man. Really happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. And some social on social media about Anthony Kim. Fans love this guy. AK has managed to go from what the to what if in the space of a week. Never would have had the opportunity, but for Live Golf, you gotta love that. I, I, I just, I'm a, I am now one of the biggest fans just seeing how he's been playing. Talent doesn't just disappear. I, know, I saw someone else tweet, and it might come up next. Uh, he might just be the, the the best putter in the world. I think we had that coming up too. <laughs> look, <laughs> Mr. Short Game, look at this best putter on the planet. Uh, do you guys co-sign this or what, Dom? You got you got go tagged. you got tagged in yeah. this. So what's that, your what's your what take called, on right? this, Dom? <laughs> And on track to shoot low round of the day. At you know, he was, uh, Anthony was, tr Anthony and Cameron Smith were actually trending on the X and on, on Twitter. Um, best putter in the world? No, he was, the, the guy in the playoff is the best putter in the world in, in uh, Cameron Smith. But it was it's just, you can't put enough super superlatives to his performance this week, yesterday, two over par and then five under today. I ran into Anthony Kim in the mall last night. Uh, he was at peace just with his family, just had good vibes. It was, yeah. it was great seeing him. I actually had some time in Hong Kong as well. I got to see this the city is, and- This is my favorite thing you've yeah, done. I, yeah, I, I haven't uh, seen this yet. You oh, yeah. haven't seen no, it, Dom? No, oh, well, check this out. This is my time in Hong Kong. Take a look. We're in Hong Kong, baby. Let's check it out. Y'all ready? Let's go. Hi. Hey, hey, can I have high fives? Hey, hi, my name, is, my name is Christian Crosby. This is my first time in Hong Kong. Out of these two guys, who do you think is going to win? Brooks. Who's more handsome? Who who looks better? Who's better looking? Two guys is a very handsome guy. Is a very good. They're both yeah. handsome. All right, we'll, we'll take that. We'll take that as a powerful, powerful for the for for the powerful looking men here. You're, yeah, you like I that, huh? To the Tida. 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 Oh, too low. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Down here. Oh yeah, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I see. okay. okay. Like okay. Like Boba tea, baby. It is huge. There's so many places to go, so many different people from different walks of life all coming into one melting pot of a place. So much culture here. It's incredible. Who do you think's gonna win the tournament? Oh, wait a minute, which? You're going with John. You could hold this up. All right, last choice. Who are you going with? Oh, Brooks. Give me a high five. Yeah. Come on. Like That's it. This one? Okay, okay. Hey. Again. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at the camera. You connect with the camera. This is your moment. Live golf is here in Hong Kong. Yeah. Right. You're excited, right? How's it going, man? How you doing? Cool. How's that tennis? Tennis? Is it golf? man. You didn't even know what he played a second ago, and now you're saying he's going to win it all. Five four, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Live golf league. 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 Ready? One, two, three, five, four. Woo! What do you think this guy would order at the street market? Okay. Um. I don't know. Uh, what kind of what, fish balls? Cam Smith, you got to try that fish ball, baby. With soil sauce. Okay, are you gonna take me after this interview to? Yeah, let's to go. Some, are you let's serious? Go. Yeah, let's head no, out. I'm serious. Yes, we're yep, going. Let's, let's we're go. going. Let's, let's go. go. Let's, let's go. go. Five, four, four baby. baby. I almost forgot to get something for Jerry. I gotta find something. I kind of want to give this to Jerry, but I know he'll hate it. So this right here is nice. Do you think Jerry would like this? Jerry, yes. Jerry would like this, yes. Jer she thinks Jerry would like it, I like it. I think Jerry <laughs> likes it, she thinks Jerry would like it. All right, that's a wrap. Time to sign out here in this beautiful city they call Hong Kong. Matter of fact, I might have to hop on one of these ferries right now. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Hey, wait, wait for me. Hey.
Uh, you gotta love it. Uh, and Dom, since you didn't invite me to that house party, I had to make some new friends here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you seem like you're going with great with them. Yeah, no, they're, they're my good friends. Uh, no, I had a great time in, in Hong Kong, Dom. I love it. I, it. I also, one of my favorite things about this course, this tree behind us, yeah. these beautiful red flowers just fall from the yeah. tree all day. Um, That's just, a cotton tree. It's called a, a cotton, cotton tree. tree. Yeah, okay. and we have lovely other ones. Well, we have so many trees. We have 60,000 trees on the property. I don't know who counted them, but apparently that's the number. <laughs> Jerry, How many of you, you hit? Uh, 59,000. <laughs> oh. Jerry, did you throw that gift in the trash? Uh, oh, no, I got it in my carry-on. There's some countries I don't think I can get that into, though. <laughs> All right, this was a lot of fun here in Hong Kong, almost as fun as Mayakoba. Let's take a look back there. T24 Live Golf League is finally upon us. Hold on a second. There's a new sheriff in town. John Rahm is marching with his lead of 13. The wind is in his sails. Relentless. Staggering display today by Waco Neiman. Waco Neiman to continue this scintillating round of golf. 59 for the Chilean. 59? Yeah. Did not see that happening, let's just say that. The cavalry charge is on. Waco yeah. Neiman must be just sensing the footsteps behind him. This is far from done. John Rahm. Money. Money. You know. You just know how badly he wants it. Are you not entertained? This is gripping stuff in Mayakoba, Mexico. Legion 13 on margin. Okay, looks a run for another birdie. Legion 13 at the moment are going to win going away. This is going all the way. John Rahm ends on 17 and 18 with bogey on both. Like we're just a two horse race now. Now has this to seal his first live golf title. It was just a all the way. Yeah, a little firm on that line. And so it continues. We will have the seventh individual playoff. 55 holes, can't separate these two. And it's back to the 18th tee we go for a second playoff hole between Neiman and Garcia. Well, he knew the minute he hit it, it wasn't enough. It is getting really dark. A real sense of theater between these two. <laughs> Sergio wants it. Here we go. And we go again for a fourth playoff hole. Well, they know every grain of grass on this hole right now. Right about now, his heart just sank. What a great scene. Well, well for I'm the fourth at, time. This year, starting. Walco Neiman to win. Feels awesome, and yeah, I mean there are, there are golf courts up there. <laughs> and he wins his first live golf title. Uh, I hope everybody knows what I feel like I already knew is that you know we're definitely a force to be reckoned with, and uh, hopefully this is the first one of many. You know I can't think of a better way to start my my pro career, and uh, the only thing I'm worried about is that I'm, I'm going to wake up and this all be a dream. So um, very thankful yeah, you don't have here. to worry about that. But <laughs> <laughs> so pinch me. Lights were out in Mayakoba, and the rain is pouring here in Hong Kong. Next stop, Miami. As we look uh, to our Miami tournament, I got to ask you, too. I'll start with you, Dom. Uh, what are you most excited for? What are you looking to 
for our, our Miami staff. Well, Miami's the week before the Masters, and we have 13 players who will be playing the week after Miami, and what a course to prepare on. I mean, the Blue Monster, one of the hardest courses these guys will ever play, so it's good preparation for the guys who will be playing the week after at yeah. the Masters. Like Don's alluding to, it's a big ballpark. It's a big boys ballpark, and uh, it'll be our first time playing a stroke play event on that course. Mm -hmm. It's been the team championship the last two years, so it's going to, a lot of the players have some experience there, but everybody's heard about it. It's, it's, it's an infamous golf course that uh, you can't fake it around. Well, let's take one last look at the leaderboard here, and pow, there it goes. Oh, wow, that playoff was unbelievable. Um, what, what do you what do you love the most about this leaderboard as you look at it from from our Hong Kong tournament, guys? Well, Dom, what, what, do you, what do you say? What sticks, this is your home. What sticks out to me is 13 under was the winning score. So I, Hong Kong Golf Club was the winner this week, Jerry. It absolutely was. It was the it was one of the it was the 55th star of Live Golf League starting the week. It ended up shining a lot brighter than that. It is the historic course is just awesome. Well, Jerry, thank you so much. Uh, Dom, thank you so much. And all of you watching today, thank you for watching Club 54 post-round show. We look to see you guys in Miami. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, Jerry. Put the peace sign up. Put the peace sign up.